Folks, welcome to an all new So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey, your Friday edition. And if it's Friday, you know what that means. It means we're recapping Real Housewives of New Jersey. Kidding. It's Vanderpump Rules Friday. Vanderpump Mania strikes again. We have started doing these in two parts. The first part will be the recap of this week's episode, Lucky Number Episode 13, what an episode it was. And then the second part is going to be all like an amalgamation of all of the Vanderpump news from the week there. And we're going to do a trailer breakdown of the season finale trailer that got leaked. There's two versions of this trailer out there and we'll go over both. Um, my Instagram account almost got taken down for posting the, uh, the leaked one with a couple of different scenes than you saw on the official release one. And, and I guess Bravo really did not want that to get out yet. They were eventually going to, I thought it was fine no matter what. So how this works though, is so we got this week's episode next week will be the penultimate episode. And the week after that Wednesday will be the finale. Then supposedly from my understanding right now, we have a two part reunion plus a third secrets revealed potentially. I think Listen, if I was Andy, and God, I wish I was, um, just because of his friendship with John Mayer. <laughs> By the way, is it crazy that I got into the, like Grateful Dead uh, partly because of Andy Cohen? Anyways, I'll I'll deal with that in therapy. Um, if I was them, I would, you know, because the reunion now is like a month plus old when they 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 taped that, and so much has happened. If I was Andy, if I was Bravo, and I know some Bravo people listen, so please put this past him. You can even take it as your own idea. Um, is that I would get Sandoval, Ariana, and Rachel, Raquel, Rachella, Ratchet. I would get them now, a month and a half later, and see what has changed in this in this month and a half since that reunion. Because so much has changed. Listen, I mean, plus, you know, like, I mean, I mean, we got a lot of it on the Howie Mandel podcast, which we'll talk about in the second one, because Howie Mandel went on Nick Vile's podcast to talk about his podcast with Tom. I'm hoping then Nick Vile will go on somebody else's podcast to talk about his podcast with Howie that talked about his podcast with Tom. It's just a very sick cycle of podcasting right now. But here you are with me in my, in, in, you know, in, in my bosom. Uh, that I'm going to walk you through uh, this week's episode. And I hope you're ready to have a good time, folks. I really do. I hope you're going to laugh. Well, we might make some broader points, but at the end of the day, I hope we can get silly and stupid and take this really tragic event that we are seeing play out on these episodes in a whole different way because we already know the secret reveal. So it is fascinating. Nobody can deny it is even more fascinating than this. I mean, obviously it is making this entire season, even though I think there are elements of this season that were already amazing. Nobody can argue how much this really adds to the viewer experience so much so that, you know, people still people to this day, you know, you flat earthers out there saying this is all staged. God bless you. Uh, I'm going to try not to yell too much about that, but I, I who knows? I, I might. But uh, listen, I think now they're seeing the success of this. Now I have a feeling, you know, you, you know, maybe people will try to actually fake something like this down the line just to see how successful this all was. But remember, at the end of the day, it's not successful for two people, Mr. Tom Sandal Balls and Rachel Raquel Rachella. Dude, Ra Raquel dipped out, dude. Dipped out, man. I, you dipped out, dude. If I hear dipped out, well, if by the way, if any of your loved ones are saying dipped out, just know that they're probably cheating and lying through their teeth. If I hear the word dipped out, if I mean, like, I honestly, you know, as a 41 year old man, I, I, I've always thought Tom was a young soul, but when he says dipped out, my nuts shrink even smaller than they already are. I start to have any nuts. I'm like, they're not, they're no longer outies. They're directly inside me now because I, dude, she dipped out, dude. We had a slumber party, dude. She was on the couch. 
There, I mean, listen, you can really tell the, you know, the women on Vanderpump rules as opposed to the men. You know, you got Lala. She's got a fucking office. You got Ariana and Katie working on sandwich shops, working on their life. You've got Schwartz and Sandoval having slumber parties uh, in a hot tub, potentially double teaming Rachel Raquel in some kind of weird Vanderpump train that is just disgusting to think about. And then Tom has to make excuses the next day. Like, Fit, he's dipped out, dude. Dip that you have a you're a homeowner. Nobody dips out when you're a homeowner. You are a homeowner. Just say uh, she part she partook in an evening at this house, and she was. A, it's like we're still like Tom. Why don't you just put a mattress in the kitchen? My God, like you're you're acting like you 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 rent. <laughs> it's there's so many disturbing elements to watch this guy get such a bone zone boner every time he was talking about Rachel Raquel's birthday in the desert. He was like, dude, I'm so proud of you, dude. What the dude, dude, dude. so fucking awesome, dude? You fucking you're growing, you're turning into yourself. <laughs> Would you give me a hand job today? It was like fucking like so mature. It was a mature hand job. By the way, as I just say that off the top of my head, I want to remind people this is uh, a family show. <laughs> no, this is an uh, this is adult content. So if you uh, if any kids are listening, what's up, dude? You're listening to the coolest podcast on the world. Share it with your friends. No, but seriously, uh, this is for adults, adult language. And also remember, I do imitations. These are not exact imitations. I hate that I have to say this every week, but at some point, but I will tell, wait, this is amazing. So I do, I've always heard, and you can go back to three seasons ago when I was doing these recaps on So Bad It's Good. I would always do Tom with the lift because I thought I heard this mini, there was just like a, a tiny lift. It was just very tiny. It was like barely. But sometimes if you're not a good impersonator like me, you'll take the little things you hear and try to expand on that. That's that's me being an artist. And it is funny, though. So I'll get shit about it sometimes. Most people like it. It is men and good, good uh, fun. But his lisp is getting more pronounced. Even people like watching the trailer and last week's episode, I got so many people reach out to me as like, I fucking hear it now. I hear the lisp, dude. And I'm like, I told you it was there. I told, I even when I love Sandoval, I, I heard that little lisp. It's very tiny. And of course, Rachel Raquel. Ah. Um, and we'll talk about her, uh, her IG account getting hacked supposedly on Mental Health May um, and that post. We'll talk about that on the second part. Um, but listen, just to say, you know, since it is mental health, May, I guess May is mental health month. And if you do listen to this show, I know this might sound silly. I do take mental health very, very seriously. I do. I go to therapy. Um, I'm on, uh, I'm on, you know, uh, I take Lexapro, you know, I take, uh, anti-depression medicine and I take that stuff very seriously. And, uh, so with the Raquel Rachel stuff, I do want to say, like, I hope she is truly getting the help that she needs because she does need a lot of help. Um, because even if you watch this episode, you really see how easily she can just lie, just easily. Like Tom just does it like a fucking idiot. He's just like, Ugh. he's just a motor mouth where you're like, that dude's lying about something. I mean, Lala, I mean, to her credit, calls it out multiple times in this episode. You guys are all going to say they all knew, but no. Lala's always also not like Sandoval, but she called it out. She got that vibe. And I thought that was very, very interesting. But to watch Raquel in this, and of course, Tom was this kind of ringleader, but, you know, for who she is, she just seems like a very, very lost person. And I really hope she figured, I mean, but the thing with mental health is that it is a daily battle. It is a yearly struggle. It is a day in, day out for the rest of your life. It's not like, uh, well, I, I got the weight off. Now I can go back to sensibly eating. No, it's something you have to fight with every day because it's all your past rolled up into exactly where you are right then. And she was already not doing well. You know, you think about even her dating history and how much the men in her life kind of. Uh, determined her course of action, even with this. But you see that trailer for the finale, like I said, which we'll talk about in the second part, but just the way she giggles and laughs. And of course, I'm a nervous laugher as well, but not the time, dude. Not not the time, dude. Just dip out, man. So anyways, I wanted to say, uh, and for all of you guys, I know a lot of you write me in that, that have mental health issues as well. I mean, listen, it should not be stigmatized at all because the majority of us do have that. It's not... Never feel ashamed to admit that. Like, 
feel ashamed like I do that you sneak at Taco Bell like two in the morning and eat a bunch of like crunchy gorditas, you know, and then hide in your bed. That's shameful sometimes. And sometimes it's fun. But don't ever be shameful about your mental health or e actually trying to figure yourself out. Um, but it's like, uh, you know, my teacher would always say about learning, you know, I want to be learning until the day I die. You know, understanding yourself is going to be something that you are going to have to. If you're not too egotistical, it's going to be one of the great voyages of your life to try to figure out who you are as a person. So, OK. Uh, some show notes. If you like this podcast and my God, I'm so insecure. I need you to like it. Please leave a, a five-star review on Apple podcasts and Spotify. You can do both. Um, it is really quick and free to do. And I always say that about other podcasts that come and join us because man, it is so cool that we get to do this. And it's so cool. I get to do this at the level that I'm doing this at right now and that it's just getting bigger. It's so, so exciting. Um, and also I was talking to my friend Nick on yesterday's show from the writer's guild and he was explaining the strike and I was, we were talking about, he was like, you know, there's guys like me, you know, he's been in this industry for so long as a writer. He's like, there's guys like if I started out right now, I would never be able to get to the point where I'm at now. And I was thinking about that in terms of podcasting, like three years ago, when three plus years ago, when I started this, you know, it was already what I thought was an overly saturated market for even Bravo podcasts. And you had like the fucking, uh, you know, you, you had the Mount Rushmore of, you know, you had the, the Watch What Crabbins guys, of course, you had Danny, you had Laura, you had Kate. I bring up these people all the time, you know, people that have been doing this forever. And I really, you know, there is a bit of ignorance and obliviousness, even though I always pride myself on trying not to be that said, OK, I can do this. I can do this. But now I think about all these podcasts that are starting now and I'm like, wow, it's even harder for them. So, you know, whatever you listen to, even if I annoy you and you're like, I don't like this, go over and support them. Find those podcasts out and support them because it is so hard to try to get in front of anybody these days because there's so much of everything. And uh, I'm really appreciative to have you here. So, okay, so that is that on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash so bad it's good. We did like a two hour, we did a, a Q and A live. Uh, I did, I think I did like three episodes this past week on Patreon plus a summer house recap, which I fucking, I did a solo summer house recap on Wednesday morning before I drove to Arizona and I had a blast. I had so much fun doing that summer house recap. I revealed a lot about myself and we talked about the engagement with Carl and Lindsay also threw in some Vanderpump rules stuff. And I, I will tell you about this on Monday, but I, I was, I've been in a DM conversation with Miss Lindsay Hubbard uh, the last couple of days that I've found very enlightening. And it is sometimes interesting to remember that these are real people, even though we all want to think all of this is fake and staged. Remember these really are real people with real feelings. And I think about my own, hello, Mom, come on in. Hey, you want to say hi real quick? Just oh. just say hi on the mic. We can cover the camera. Okay. Just say hi. Just say hi. Hey, mic. everybody. Hope everybody's doing good and listening fun. Yeah. And you're, you're going to come on with Dad on Monday and talk about Vanderpump Rules, right? Oh, yeah. We just watched some tonight. What did, what did you think about Rachel real quick? Uh, <laughs> okay. Don't get me started. I, I need to rest. Okay. I love you, Mom. Love get you. get sleep. Okay. okay. Uh, okay, Becky Maley made a surprise appearance there. She is, it's 8.30 here. That This is actually past her bedtime. So her and dad both watch Vanderpump Rules with me because I watched it like three or four times and uh, they both wanted to watch it. And mom has her like kind of, like not a hospital bed, but she kind of has like this late where she's comfortable in the bedroom. But she even came out and watched with us on the uh, the big TV. And I covered up the camera. If you're watching this on YouTube, which by the way, we're on YouTube. I covered up the camera just because she doesn't have her wig and on and all this stuff. And, and we want her to feel pretty because she is pretty. Um, but she, her and my dad watched it. So when I do the recap, I'll have, I wrote down some little moments where my dad would say something out loud. And I just thought it would be funny. So they'll probably be on for like 15 or 20 minutes or whatever my mom can do on Monday. But yeah, I'm here in Arizona for the next couple of weeks. I'll be back, I think for the Vanderpump. I think me and Kiki Monique, she's reached out. I think we're going to do a season finale watch party. We're waiting for a couple of things. We have a couple fishes in the line, but Kiki uh, reached out to me and I was like, yeah, that sounds cool. So I'll drive back for that. And I think I'm going to be up podcasting with Annabelle DeSisto. She's coming into town as well. So that'll be exciting. And then I'll be back to Arizona. It's just back and forth and back and forth. Um, but my mom's in a really good mood this last uh, 
week. And I'm really thankful of that. And thank you for all the well wishes. And as you know, with mental health or just even your overall health, it is such a slow, scary, hard battle for everybody involved. But we're here to have fun. I'm so glad she got to pop in and say hi. And uh, okay, so yeah, I was saying I did the Patreon. It is really fun over there. And I think that's it, you guys. I think that's it. I need to spend a day this weekend replying to all the birthday messages and stuff. Um, this is part of my uh, mental health is that I find it very hard to accept love. So when everybody says such nice things, like I'll always focus on those negative things and you get like a handful every week and those will kind of haunt you for the week. The, the nice things, sometimes it's like overwhelming because listen, I was a kid when I grew up in Kansas, I, I, I used to want to be popular so badly and, and it just wasn't in the cards for me. And I wanted people to like me so much. And I just thought I was such an outcast, such a nerd. And I never knew why I liked the things that I liked. And I never, you know, and it's so nice to now uh, lean in to all of the things that I truly love and not feel like such a, or, or also it's not about feeling like a nerd or like cool or whatever. It's like, it's exciting that I don't care fully what people think completely anymore because I really love doing this. Anyways, this is so boring when I talk about myself. Let's talk about these flipping freaks at Vanderpump Rules. Also, special shout out as always to Juliana Carroza, who takes amazing notes each week, gets better and better each week. And she's just uh, the best. Actually, she sent me a trapper keeper and it was she sent me a trapper keeper because Tom Sandoval had a trapper keeper uh, not, you know, well, he had one of those old school trapper keepers from the 80s. He had it in his work meeting at Schwartz and Sandy's, which kind of was a telltale sign that Schwartz and Sandy's is not going too well. But I had mentioned wanting one and she sent me not an actual trapper keeper, but it was like a, a binder that's just so bad it's good and has Batman on it, which is kind of my geek dream. So thank you for that. And thank you for the beautiful notes she takes as always. Oh my goodness. I didn't even get to ask how you guys are doing. Are you good? Are you good? You don't have to be good, but just know it's Friday. And if you made it to Friday, the next two days, they're yours. We truly are going to live forever. Raise a glass. These are the best days of our lives, not of the Vanderpump Rules cast lives, but our lives. And that's all that matters. Also, I talked to a couple of the castmates from Summer House Martha's Vineyard that airs this Sunday right after Real Housewives of Atlanta, which premieres as well. I've watched both of the premiere episodes and it's really Atlanta gets right back into what it was last season. And there's like some really fun moments with uh, Cherie, uh, Cherie and and um I just, it's like already at the end, like a mess. She, uh, she by Sheree's new boyfriend, Martel, is uh, he's going to be a troublemaker. You can already tell, but that's summer house, Martha's vineyard. I'm really curious what you guys think about it. Cause I really dug it. I think, I think there's something refreshing, especially after covering Vanderpump rules for this whole so intensely that it's so nice to hear new people's stories. You're like, I'm like, Oh, I'm just like soaking it in. I'm like, yes. So I got to talk to a couple of the cast, three of the castmates today. And they were just so, so nice. It was a blast. Also, I think, um, I talked to some people in Bravo PR. I think I'll be going to New York in July for a Real Housewives of New York premiere event. So I'm very excited. Maybe, you know, uh, if my mom feels good and all that stuff and I'm able to go, maybe we'll do a meetup in New York uh, around that time for the Roni premiere. Who knows? Anyways, the sky's the limit. Thank you so much for supporting me. Okay. This is called Vanderpump Rules, season 10, episode 13. By the way, when you have this much unlucky stuff happening in a season, uh, you should just skip episode 13. Just not just go to episode 14. The uh, the title of this is called Lady and the Glamp, which is cute because they're glamping. Lady and the Tramp, obviously, but also Lady and the Tramp. I mean, it's not it's not a nice thing to say, but you could be like you know, there could be a lady in the tramp, kind of like a Raquel dig potentially there. Um, I'm not saying just that's where my mind goes. Or I would have called this dipping out, dude, like dipping out, dude, because Sandoval said it so flipping much this episode. This is the description that the cable company has when you click on it. It says Raquel's birthday dreams come true when Sandoval sticks his sauce. No, Raquel's birthday dreams come true when she embarks on a glamping trip with some of her closest friends. Oh, her forever friends, folks. Lala grows suspicious about Sandoval's interest in Raquel. Detective Lala. James and Allie attempt to work out their issues following a disastrous speech day. They always have one description that's really not much of anything. That Allie James discussion was all of a minute and a half. Um, okay. Also, 
Very sad after a DJ, DJ James Kennedy, I had a very strong episode, guys day, beach day, I threw a drink on Schwartz because he was making fun of Imagine Festival, do you know how much it, uh, it I played Imagine DJ Cascade, I did, DJ James Kennedy, he had such a strong showing in last week's episode that I was very sad that he was still there, but I, I needed more. But I do want to remind everybody, let's not get, and I'm talking to myself mainly, let's not fall in love with anybody. Let's keep all of these at a healthy liking, like we like all of them. I really like DJ James Kennedy right now, but let's not stand so completely that we forget all logic like I did with Sandoval. Remember, DJ James Kennedy, amazing showing. He has a lot of stuff he needs to work on, and he's got this golden opportunity right now. If he keeps his nose clean, his his fingers to the DJ uh, turntables, he could really, really change for the better. Ali seems like such a good influence, but just remember, there is a long history of DJ James Kennedy on this show that if you go back and watch, you will be reminded of. Now, Kristen Doty made her uh, triumphant reappearance to watch what happens live, which we'll talk about in the second episode, even though it got the highest rated ratings of the season. It beat the Schwartz one. It beat the Jacks one. It beat the Katie one. Kristen Doty did that. But remember, Kristen Doty and DJ James Kennedy dated. You remember that? When he's like, oh, I was porking her on a BMW. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I love about this show. It's like, you know, what was that uh, project? One one day you're up, the next day you're out or some shit like that. Each season, there are heroes and villains. Now, I think Sandoval will be a villain for a long time. And also on the second episode, I want to talk about what we think about next season's cast because they are interviewing right now. I also want to remind people I was on Jamie Allover's podcast uh, Jamie Lynn, who's amazing. Um, she's the co-host of shenanigans a lot of the times, but she has her own podcast. And she was the one that broke the story about Scandal in terms of her and Brett, the manager of Schwartz and Sandy's after guys night went across the street to saddle ranch and watched them have this intense conversation, which Jamie taped. And I think will be in the finale episode on her phone, but they were making fun because they didn't think anything was happening. They were just making fun of their friends. Anyways, I was on this past week's episode. We talked for like two and a half hours. I think it's only an hour episode. She cut a lot out because uh, she's not, uh, listen, she's, she's, a, she's a tight, you know, a tight podcaster, not a loose podcaster like myself, which I'll just do three hours and think nothing of it. But go check it out because there's a lot of information in there. I didn't get to listen to see what she cut out. But in the second part, I'll probably talk about a couple of things in terms of casting because I have a couple of predictions, which we talked about on there, but I don't know if it made the cut. So that is the description. Are you guys ready? Man, it takes me all day to, it's like, it, it, you know, it's such a weird feeling doing this because it takes me all day to get pumped, like <laughs> to get pumped, to get Vander pumped up to do this because it's like, oh my God, each week is intenser and intenser. And you've dealt with like the whole week of information. I've been podcasting the whole time. And I know like, this is the mountain I have to get over to actually get to Friday. So let's dig in here. Previously on Vanderpump Rules, there's a scene at Sir where Lisa's like, you seem very calm and demure. And James is like, we just got back from Mexico. A lot happened. Tom Schwartz was making out with Raquel. It's all the guys at Sir like she's making out with. Like, who's next? And then we go to the beach day from last week's episode. And Schwartz is like, hi, guys. And Katie's like, I already said hi to you earlier. Because Katie is with Socks with Sandals, Satchel, uh, her her new, um, you know, the, the guy she was dating at the time. And Schwartz is like, you don't have to put on this whole air, Katie. And Katie's like, I don't want to fuck with you. I already told you this. And Schwartz is like, good God. Like, I don't miss her in any way, shape, or form, Sandoval. He always says that with an earshot of Katie, which is like one of the rudest things at all. And you know you're mic'd up. And that's a part of alcohol and just being like, bad form and then we have a scene of sandoval on the phone with ariana and ariana is like sorry it's dark here because her grandma just died and sandoval's like you doing okay i just gives into a cup and ariana's like it's just like emotional exhaustion we go to a talking head with ariana crying and she's like my grandma bonnie she was like my best friend it's hard because it's part of life and it's something that like i've obviously been through with my dad because remember her dad passed away 10 years ago and through with charlotte her dog which passed away this season and she goes i just kind of like want a break and the lord said no no break for you ariana also on that beach day we go back to sandoval just completely wired like apparently because me and raquel were dancing at the abbey and lola's like 
Ali said how weird it was that she saw the both of you at the Abbey together. And little Lala was like, yeah, bitch. And then Sheena to Sandoval uh, in that beach scene, it was like, Ali was like, no, it was like Raquel and Sandoval on the dance floor or whatever. And then Katie said, Raquel's coming out of Sandoval. And then we see the creepiest moment on television this past year. The producer, Jeremiah, says to Sandoval in a talking head, like, has it, you know, has anything ever physically happened between you and Raquel? And Sandoval with this big big shit eating weird grin he's like e -e -e -e. no nothing that ever happened with raquel and i come on dude <laughs> she did that dude and then we get the song ding ding these are the best days of our lives just raise your glasses high there's one for you tonight also the show bordered on almost doing too much with the rewind fast forward free feature that they started in the first uh, eight minutes of this episode. A lot of people liked it. My dad did not. I want to point that out right now. But it was like, doo -doo 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 -doo, rewind, fast forward, rewind, fast forward. And it felt like a very intense documentary um, on speed. Uh, and it was it was effective a little bit when I watched it the second and third time. I was like, just tell the story. Just just start from the beginning. And just tell the story. Anyways, we have beginning with Sandoval, Ariana, Schwartz and Raquel in a car. There's four boxes like they do in Summer House, like bloop, 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 which each four of them, you know, getting in the car. And Sandoval's like, what's the address? And Ariana plugs into her phone. She's like, OK, you make a left. And Sandoval's like, all right, guys, we're off. And just to remind people, they don't point this out on the show, but they should do a pop up video kind of uh, Vanderpump where they're like at this time Sandoval had put his penis into Rachel like at this time they were in a full blown affair and now they were in a small car riding to go celebrate Rachel's birthday after Ariana got back from burying her grandma say just think about that think about how dark that was also think about the balls on this dude that was like you know what um, he had the option to break up with Ariana at that point. He also had the option. Because, you know, remember on Howie Mandel, it was like, dude, I, you know, it's like we don't share our real stuff on the show. If you wanted to share the real stuff on the show, here was your magical fucking moment, Tom Sandoval, where you could have literally been, um, hey, guys, will you come on in? I'm going to break up with Ariana today, and I'm going to say uh, what I've been feeling. Didn't even have to bring the Raquel stuff up. You could have done it. You could have done it, but you didn't. So your shit you said on Howie is another fucking lie, because if you were so concerned about bringing up your real stuff, you could have done it for the show, but you chose not to. You also chose to still go on a birthday trip with someone that you had actually actively been porking, not the girlfriend of nine years. But you also had her go. At a certain point, you weren't like weird about any of this. Also, at this point, Schwartz, even though he lied originally and said he had found out a month before when this all broke initially, uh, you know, at the end of February or March or whenever that was. Now, you know, he had changed his tune on Watch What Happens Live, finally admitted he knew in August. Now, remember, this is past that time. So Schwartz also knows, like last week at that Yeasty Boy scene in front of the, the food truck, you know, he's like, oh, I think Raquel has a crush on somebody else, dude. So he knows. So he's playing little friend games with Tom Sandoval in these scenes, thinking they're being sly. Also, Raquel Rachel knows that Schwartz knows. And that's why they're all such giggle girdies when they talk about their kiss, because they know it's full of bullshit. They know it's bullshit. So it is so funny to all of them. And guess who it's not funny to? Ariana. You're having little secrets and jokes about somebody's actual pain, but you're not thinking about somebody's actual pain because all you're thinking about is your stupid skin enjoyment. That's it. You're not actually like, you're so poisoned in your brain at this point, all three of you numb nuts, that you are actually not actively thinking about that person. Because at some point, this is what TV must do to you, even though I know a lot of bad people that aren't on television to do the similar things, but TV must like give you the balls to actually not think about other people's feelings because you're creating art, dude. Like they're literally giggling. Like that's every time you see Schwartz and Raquel from this point on, know that they know. And that's why it's so funny. So that's why Raquel next week when he, she steps to uh, Katie is like, you are divorced. It doesn't matter who Schwartz was kissing or not, you know? But just think about that because they laugh a lot. And I was wondering initially when all this happened, I was like, and, and remember, 
you know, behind the scenes, when I had talked to a lot of them, I knew the Raquel uh, short thing was a storyline. I'd already heard about that, but I also had heard, and I had told you multiple times, you guys, that I was told that, you know, it was kind of a joke. It was like a little bit of like, oh, this will be fun for the cameras. That's how it was always explained to me, even when they were filming after the, you know, like, and like I always tell you guys, I don't want to do it because I don't want to repost it because it, it seems thirsty, but I have had interviews with Sandoval on this and I had an interview with Ariana in October after filming wrapped. Go back and listen to that and see, actually hear what she says about what it was like to film after her grandma, her dog, all of this stuff. It's very interesting. And I believe we talk about Raquel a couple of times in that as well. Um, okay. So as they're driving Lisa Vanderpump calls and she was like, what's up, Lisa? Isn't it weird though, when you think about Tom, there's so many diversions, isn't it weird when you think about Tom, Tom and you know, when initially Tom, Tom came to be, you know, when they were always there, remember the Sandoval and Stassi fight of like, dude, we can't have you in for your book party, dude. And it, you really kind of got the impression of like, wow, these guys are really running this place. When in reality, the more time goes on, you realize they were just figureheads, Tom, Tom. And they were always there to take pictures of people. And they did like little things. And they tried to insert themselves in business, but they weren't making the schedules. You know, they weren't doing this heavy lifting. And I think that's why it's interesting to watch Schwartz and Sandy's them go on their own. And, you know, Brett, their actual operational manager is, you know, always pointing out what they don't know. Greg is always pointing out what they, they don't know. They know very little. And I think it's interesting. Like these guys are all, my dad even made the point. He's like, why are, why are do these guys have actual jobs or is this, this their main job? And before I would have fought my dad, I would have said, dad outside on the street right now, you will not talk about the Toms this way. But then when you think about it, you're like, yeah, like, you know, for somebody that was complaining about how much, like, dude, we need to get the bar done by August. That's it. Final. <laughs> you know, Sheena's wedding's one thing, but now we're back to work. Okay, let's just do a glamping trip real quick, but then we're immediately back to work after that. Uh, yeah, Labor Day party, that's okay, but then the Labor Day party, glamping trip, but then back to work, dude. We're serious, we gotta open this place. For somebody that's desperate to open up this place, he's taking a lot of uh, vacay, a lot, a lot of PTO, if it were. Um, so Lisa's like, where are you guys going? And Raquel's like, we're going glamping. And Sandoval's like, yeah. For my birthday. And he's like, have a good time. Relax. You've had so much stress. Enjoy yourselves. I wish I was going, except I don't do glamping. If I did, it would be with Nicolaine. Oh, Nicolaine. Um, but even Lisa, which remember, you know, her storyline has been tied into the boys storyline about like, you got to get this bar up and running. You can't be running off to weddings. And now Lisa's here like, have a good time. Relax. You had so much stress. Ariana's had so much stress. Like, wait, what do you mean to relax, have a good time? Two episodes ago, they did relax and have a good time. And uh, Sheena's, it's so confusing. They all laugh. And Sandoval's like, Lisa, we would love for you to be there. And Lisa's like, that's probably not going to happen. And Sandoval's like, you should share, you could share a bed with Ariana and I. And the camera shows Ariana making a, what, what did you fucking say? Like creepy. And this, by the way, these moments is what a normal relationship would be like. And Sandoval's like, she thinks I'm stupid, dude. She didn't fucking love my joke about Lisa sleeping in a bed with us while glamping. I guess I have to cheat on her now. A song plays to make their drive go faster. The music budget, like I keep pointing out, has gotten uh, amazing. It's gotten so large. They're like, I like diamonds. I like laying by the ocean. I like Rockefeller dudes and football coaches. Money, money, money. That's my middle name. Baby, keep it sunny and make it rain. Money, money, money. That's my middle name. It was like a, it was like a long piece of a song. And Ariana's like, we're here. Where are they? They're at Koyama Oak Ranch in Koyama, Koya, Koyama. California, Nate, the ranch owner, comes to greet them. And she was like, hi, I'm Tom. And Sandoval like, I'm Tom too. And I was like, okay, we're doing the Tom bit. And Nate's like, Tom and Tom, nice to meet you. And Sheena and Brock arrive in a second car. And she's like, I'm glad everyone has tennis shoes on because I feel like I should be in boots or something. And Sandoval's like, this is fucking great. And it's, it's really cool. It's like a, you know, a desert. I'm like, oh my God, are they going to be all on mushrooms and tripping out and stuff? Um, Sheena and a talking head's like, I'm not a camper. I've never camped in my entire life. When I think of glamping, I think of air conditioning, but like in nature. But this is what Rachel wants to do for her birthday. I'm a team player. I just don't want to really like get dirty. Uh, Sheena, you know, 
Sheena surprises me though. So I kind of was surprised when she said she'd never camped in her life. Cause it was one of those things where I was like, I, I thought maybe she had been a camper. Like it, it's one of those things that wouldn't have surprised me. Also, I want to point out when she was with Rob Valletta, Mr. Seven minute TV guy, you know, he had that place. It was a big bear that he rented out and that was kind of a lot, run a lot of wood. So I thought, you know, I, th I don't know. For some reason, I was like, Sheena could be that person that was a pro camper. And Nate's like, this is my boyfriend, Ricky. So let me give you a mini tour. By the way, I want to tell you this. Sandoval at this point grabs Nate on the shoulder and like, yeah, yeah, dude, which is kind of like a psychological um a little bit of a tactic there of like, you know, get into somebody's personal space in a positive way and kind of endear them. I'm looking now at all Tom's body language in these these shots. And he, I noticed he did that and it kind of ingratiates you to Tom a little bit. I'm not saying it's bad. I just noticed it. It's a thing. Um, and Nate's like, we have two yurts. Uh, yurts are kind of like tents. Uh, yurts, by the way, uh, Juliana put in a description of it. Yurt is a noun. It's a tent-like dwelling of the Mongol and Turkic peoples of Central Asia, consisting of a cylindrical wall of poles and a lattice arrangement with a conic conical roof of poles, both covered by felt or skins, or in this case, canvas. Oh my God, Sandoval's like, use my penis skin, dude. It's so engorged because of Rachel. You could fucking build a yurt with this thing, dude. Penis yurt. Raquel, you, you, you inspired me to make a penis yurt. I haven't felt this way where my penis could make a yurt in so long. <laughs> We're having fun. Anyways, Nate's like, okay, that one has a king yurt and this one has two queens in it. Everything is solar generated. I have pigs you can pet. I have goats. And Brock's like, Raquel, this is like a real life animal crossing. And Raquel's like, this is, oh yeah. Is this the boy's tent? And Brock's like, yeah. And Joyce is like, wait, where's the bathroom? That's the outhouse? And Sandoval's like, yeah, dude. Or you can just go anywhere. The one with the moon. <laughs> and Schwartz looking around. He's like, I like the idea of anywhere. It's very liberating. Ariana's like, just anywhere. And Nate's like, you guys ready for the critters? And they're like, yeah. And Brock's uh, cackling to the chickens. He's like, let's go play with the animals. And she's like, I don't want to step in shit. And Schwartz pointing to a white turkey's red gullet thingy. He's like, Look at this. And Brock's like, yeah, that's his gotti. <laughs> uh, by the way, I, I was messaging with Brock last week. And I will say, true, like, you know, we had that thing because I want him to come on the show. And he's like, dude, I just I want to take a back seat to Sheena. You know, I don't want to like get involved in all of this, you know, like this. And I kind of I kind of uh admire him for that. You know, I'm like, that's a good way to go about things, I think. And I kind of think it proves also he's not just in this for his own kind of intent, uh, for his, you know, for his own popularity. Um, Ariana, Ariana, the turkey's like, oh, my God, it's purple. The thing under his chin kind of looks like your balls. And Santa was like, my balls don't look like that, which you can all <laughs> you can also see him being mad. Like, don't say that for Raquel, dude. She's going to think my balls look like a turkey neck, dude. And then to Schwartz, he's like, your balls look like that. And Schwartz is like, I know. My balls are nice. They're all petting pigs and goats. And Schwartz is like, can we give them treats or no? And Nate's like, you're going to smash those pumpkins out there and just throw them in. And they all take turns bashing the pumpkins, literal pumpkins on the ground. They all smash, except Ariana. She breaks hers on the second try, which I don't know if that was kind of foreshadowing. I'm looking just for cute clues in all of this. I'm like, hmm, what do they always say about when your pumpkin doesn't break on the first time? That means potentially your nine to 10 year boyfriend is cheating on with you, somebody right next to you. Uh, she breaks hers on the second try. They all throw the pieces of pumpkin over the fence into the animal pins. And Ariana's like, wow, they love it. We pop back to the city and find Lala at her new office in LA where she's unpacking her product on display on shelves. And James walks in. So I'm trying to understand Lala's business a little bit, all the stuff that she's involved in ever since Randall. I will say this. Listen, uh, Lala has a really, really strong fan base. Um, and she makes the point that she's doing all of this stuff to support her daughter. And really, this has fallen on her to support her daughter because Randall is allegedly not good for anything. And I don't even know. I don't even think we have to say allegedly anymore. Um, but it's frustrating, though. Because I feel like we need to point that out in every scene. Like, 
you know, she says, you know, this is going to put my daughter through college. I wanted to add that extra line on there of like, because her, her, her father is a piece of shit. No good. Like, I don't want the Kardashian approach where they just like treat all the men in their lives that have treated them like shit, like Kings still. I don't think Randall deserves that. And since they're doing the ABC special on him, I'm glad it'll be covered there. But I think this is a missed opportunity for Vanderpump Rules, not because of Lala, I'm sure. But like Vanderpump Rules, I think this is a missed opportunity. You need to look past Scandal at some point. And I think stuff like this is going to also be in the news for years to come when I meaning Randall. So I feel like you need to keep reminding people of the situation that she was in, which also makes her hypersensitive to the situations of everybody else. You need to sometimes give Lala or the audience for Lala, give them the reason why she's being like this. It can't just, you know, we always, well, she's just looking for a storyline. Like, you know, what if she's doing this? because of how she was treated, because she was treated like an idiot, because she bought his bullshit that he sold her. Like we need to, that we need to sometimes be reminded. And that's why Lala is putting her nose into things and creating these things. You know, you, it's not just for a storyline. Maybe it's because of all of this other stuff. And I think it would do a great service for Lala if the show would actually remind us that just, you know, a season ago, last season, she was still with Randall. And we started off strong with the beginning of the season, but it's kind of, you know, gotten lost with like the dawn and all of the other stuff. And anyways, this is at her new office in L.A. where she's been packing product. So I guess she has like hoodies. She has the books. She has the makeup. I'm not sure what other products she, she has. The Daryl shirts, which ha hadn't been created yet. And James, James, King James walks in and she's like, hi, Jameson. And James is like, Hey, and she's like, how are you, babe? This is the first of three times that Lala asks James how he's doing. And James is like, whoa, look at this place. It keeps getting better every time I come. And Lala's like, well, we're trying. Holy shit. And then Lala once again goes, how are you? And he's like, good. How are you? And Lala's like, good. I was just, and James looking at Lala's, you know, beauty products, the books, clothing. Look at all of this. And she's like, I know it's cute, right? I love the robes. And she's like, I'm having Katie and Christina over to shoot the robes today. The robes are so cozy. They have hoods. How are you feeling? Third time. And James like, good, good. And Lola's like, you do? And James like, but really, you know, didn't go to plan my nice beach day. <laughs> Which remember that was the scene he had with Lola. I think I'm going to invite everybody to the beach. Uh, Lala's like, yeah, I don't love the throwing of the drink. And they flash back to Beach Day where James goes to Schwartz like, ho, ho, hilarious. Yeah, go make another fucking joke, fat man. And douses him with beer in his face. Lala continues, but I'm just looking at Schwartz. It's so embarrassing. And don't even get me started on Tom Sandoval. And little Lala's like, yeah, fuck that dude. By the way, you know Raquel slept at Sandoval's last night, right? And James, who doesn't look surprised, goes, how do you... How do you know about this? <laughs> By the way, I I was in love with how he said. He goes, he goes. How do you? He goes, hi. How do you? And he goes, how do you know about this? And Lala goes, because Katie called me last night, and she and James goes, <gasps> Katie knows. And Lala's like, yes. And this is when black and white turns to black and white. Lala begins to narrate the story as they rewind tape to bring them back to Beverly Hills at Lisa's house. And Lala's like, okay, so let's get this straight. Two days ago, Katie was at Villa Rosa working on sandwiches while Ariana was back home at her grandmother's funeral. They show Katie and others in Lisa's kitchen slicing bread and building sand. You know, I've always considered Villa Rosa like a Subway pop-up shop, you know, like a Subway test kitchen just for just all the good old sandwiches. It's Come to Villa Rosa. We make meatball subs here around hanky and panky. Um, so Lala goes, they're tasting sandwiches. When Ken walks out, which that's kind, Ken like kind of just shuffles like, uh, 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 and, and, and drops the mother of all gossip bombs. And this, by the way, if Ken doesn't work, if Ken doesn't win an Emmy, like what are we even doing here? Ken's like, oh, I can't believe. And Lisa's like, what? And Ken continues, that Tom Sandoval had Raquel over when Ariana's away. And Lisa's like, I know, I know. And Ken's like, and in the jacuzzi as well. <laughs> He's just standing there. He's like, <laughs> it's like how I stand in front of a fridge at three in the morning where I'm like, how did I get up here? What am I doing? He's like, oh, and in the jacuzzi. <laughs> 
<laughs> By the way, when people when people want to say reality shows are fake, they're not fake. But this scene was staged, okay? Katie might not have known that Kim was going to come in, but the producers and Lisa told Kim to do it. And Kim was like, fuck it, you know. Okay, I'll do it. I'll just, I'm not just you know, shuffling around. I'll do it. So this was... You know, like it's obvious, like, and it's okay. Those things always happen in reality television. The story is true. Kim coming in, they told him to do it. Good, God bless him. And Katie, Katie's like, What? And Lisa's like, I know, I know, I know. And then Kim goes, And she stayed all night. <laughs> I like they possibly Ken's like spine in Sandville's backyard with cut to Ken in a tree with binoculars. Oh, oh my God, they're in the jacuzzi. Look at, oh, Schwartz. Oh, very town, yes. Oh, no, she's staying the night. I've got to get home to Villa Rosa. I can't afford to keep spying here. He's just shuffling out of Tom's backyard. <laughs> How are you, ladies? Are you making Sammy's? Uh, anywho, can you believe Tom <laughs> Can you believe Tom Sandoval's mustache? <laughs> can you believe Tom's veins in his arm? Do you think he's cycling? At least he's like, get away, old man. Why are you doing this? Did you? <laughs> My favorite thing is the thing that this wasn't staged at all. And Kim just was like, oh, I must tell the girls about Tom Sandoval. <laughs> Tom, Ken doesn't even, he's not even aware how he got the information. He's like, oh, I got an Instagram DM, oh, Tom. <laughs> anyway, so Katie goes, are you lying? Are you spreading rumors? How does he know? And Lisa goes, I told him earlier. And then he goes, Marky, come on, let's go. Like as quick as he came in and delivered that message, he's out. He's like, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Marky, come on. Yes. I must go try to destroy other relationships. <laughs> I want more of Ken and just scenes where he pops in and he goes, did you know how long they stayed out last night of just everybody? Lala, did you know Randall was with those women in, in Tennessee? Sorry. And Katie goes, okay, Lisa, what do you know? Lisa's like, Raquel was late. She was hung over. And then the tape rewinds some more. And Lala continues, okay, the day before, Lisa is doing a tasting for the new menu at Sir when Rachel rolls up an hour and a half late. Raquel's walking into Sir. It's like, Hi, Lisa's sitting there. Like, I don't know what this fucking was. Is this like a jury or something? Lisa's sitting at a table with Guillermo and his wife, all sir partners. And then it's like Charlie Burnett is on one side. There's food all over the table. Supposedly, this was a tasting, which is like, you know, she's like, we would taste new food for sir. By the way, that's fake as fuck. I don't think sir has changed their menu and like since it's been open. But like, we've decided to take away one of the cheese balls. And so there's just two goat cheese balls now. Great. Uh, good meeting, everybody. Raquel's like, I'm sorry. I'm so late. And Lisa's like, tell me why you're late. Tell me, dear girl. I want to hear why you're late. You smell like semen. No. And Raquel sits down at the table next to Charlie and she's like, I overslept. And Lisa's like, overslept? <laughs> I like that that's, we're in restauranting. We can't oversleep. Who's going to try this new shitty menu? We've literally got to find new ways for people to have diarrhea here. The owner and managers are all staring at Raquel. And Raquel's like, I stayed up late. I went back to Tom's place and we went in the jacuzzi with Schwartz. Lisa, who is just in disbelief, even though she's seen this for 10 seasons now, goes, so you were in the jacuzzi with both of them. And Charlie's like, just you three? And Raquel's like, yeah. Um, I mean... There was that rumor put out there that, you know, they had a threesome, Schwartz and Sandoval. I sometimes think, you know, sometimes those are people that have seen the episodes already and kind of puts out of like, well, 
I saw this, you know, I'll just put this out there because it could kind of be believable. But listen, I think Schwartz is so lazy that I cannot see him having, you know, sex, let alone sex with his best friend and somebody else. You know, like, oh, where should I go? You know what? I'm probably just going to hang back and like watch. Ah, uh, and they're like, Sandoval, like, get your hands out of your mouth, dude. Oh, f- oh sorry, dude. Oh, my God. Um, so uh, Lisa, with a pained look on her face because she has tried the sir menu, leans back in her chair and turns her face away before turning back and says, what did you say last night? And Raquel's like, hey, Sandoval's. And Lisa, is her face is in total disbelief and pain and her mouth drops and Raquel's like nothing happened though like it's not like because at this point they're trying to continue this lie and Sandoval's like dude they have no reason everybody thinks I'm a good guy just remember there's no reason I'm a good friend you so nobody thinks I'm porking you even though I am porking you so just never just commit to that lie dude at least like doesn't matter if anything happened it's just the fact that you're there one time Nick Lane stayed for a month and Ken was was very upset. He shuffled into the kitchen. He's like, did you know Nick Elaine has been here for one month now? <laughs> Why is Nick Elaine feeding our little mini horses? Raquel goes, I know, it's bad, I know. It was just easier to sleep on the couch and stay the night. And, you know, this is, she gets caught into this lie too because she, I guess she started off on the couch. I don't know. It's all lies because I think he totally porked her, you know? in the bed. I don't think he parked her on the couch. Uh, I know I keep saying port, but I think that's just a, a gentler uh, term for fucking. Um, now the tape fast forwards. Blah, 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 and Lala continues narrating. We all know Lisa. She can sniff bullshit from a mile away. So of course she calls Sandoval. Uh, the music here is interesting. It's like that's an old classical piece. Lisa's on FaceTime with Sandoval. He's like, hello, you. And Sandoval's in his car with Schwartz. He's like, hey, Lisa. Lisa's like, I'm calling you because Raquel has just shown up here an hour and a half late looking like a bag of shit. And then she said she got so wasted last night and ends up spending the night at your house. The camera shows Sandoval and he's laughing. He's like, oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> Immediately trying to laugh to cover up his uh, insane bullshittery. And Lisa's like, it's not funny. And Sandoval's like, dude, we hung out for a little bit, dude. Literally dipped out. Like, just, I don't know. Like, actually, she, like, left early. And Lisa's like, hold on a second. So she didn't stay the night? And Sandoval's like, I think she dipped out, which is true. Like, dipped out. And Lisa's like, what does dipped out mean? And then this is when Ken shovels in. Dipped out means me. No. <laughs> and then they fast forward the tape again to Lisa's kitchen. And Katie's like, dipped out means she left. She booked. Vanderpump rules guide to slang. Lisa's like, no, no, no. She did stay the night. We rewind the tape. And this is the point where Middow was like, I'm getting a little tired of the rewinding. Lisa's still on the phone with the guys. It's like, so did she spend the night at your house or not? And Santa was like, I mean, look, like, no. Did she or not? Yes or no. And Santa was like, yes, but like, dude, like just... I'm not dude, Sandoval. And Sandoval raising his voice. Yeah, but I have people crash in my house all the time. I am not dude. And Sandoval goes, all right, Lisa. I have people. All right, Lisa. Not dude. I have people crash in my house. Oh, she's not people, Sandoval. Your wife's away and she's a beautiful single girl when she does her makeup and dresses properly. <laughs> Sandoval gets offensive. I know. I'm just like over this like whole Schwartz and Raquel thing. Like I don't. Sandoval very slyly trying to throw it back to Schwartz. And Schwartz interjects like, that's not a thing. At least like, no, it's not. Schwartz and Raquel is so last week. Now it's Schwartz, Sandoval, and Raquel thing. And Sandoval's like, oh, dude, come on, man. Fast forward the tape again. Back to Lala's office. James is like, Sandoval and I went to a smoking lounge yesterday. We went upstairs. It was basically a members only smoking marijuana, Mary Jane, the devil's lettuce lounge. We flash to a quick shot of James and Sandoval, both there just toking joints, like, one day, <laughs> one day, 
oh man, smoking this weed reminds me I want to play Coachella one day. James is like, at first she, you know, Raquel leapt. Um, sorry, so no, no, no. So James continues, he told me they were in the jacuzzi for a little bit. Uh, you know, which could you imagine him and, and Sandoval smoking weed and Sandoval's like, what do you think life's all about, man? Like, we're just spinning on this big earth, this big round earth. Definitely not a flatter. <laughs> we're just spinning. It's a big ball of gas, dude. What's life all about? I don't know, but I want to play DJ and I've worked so hard. And James is like, he says, at first, then she, you know, Raquel left. We cut to the smoking lounge and Santa was like, yeah, dude, we grabbed some beer, jumped in the hot tub for a little bit. And then like Raquel dipped out once again with the dipped out. Now, this is 116 seconds later. They're probably just sat there in just stoner glory. And Sandoval's like, so obviously, Schwartz and Raquel spent the night. Um, their dogs are there, whatever. Dude, they brought their, I mean, is this a lie or did they really bring their dogs there? Did, did, did fuck, I mean, this fucking Graham, Graham Cracker, you know, this season, I want to remind you, Graham had a tough go of it. You know, lost James, literally got a puncture wound in his neck. And now he has to watch Tweedledum and Tweedledee fuck all night. Like Graham is, I mean, can somebody call the ASPCA? This isn't how we treat our animals in our life like could you imagine like dude Raquel you're so special and Graham's like help, help me I don't have opposable thumbs what's James's number oh Graham Graham isn't a part of my life anymore I, I'm a cat man now I love cats I hate dogs oh Graham dipped out so I can't talk to him anymore um so James is like what and Sandoval's like yeah and James is like I thought you said Raquel left and Sandoval's like no, I, I think she dipped out and went to bed. And James like, oh. And Santa was like, she literally went into my fucking room. I, oh, oh, not my room, sorry. My guest room or whatever. And James like, okay. <laughs> it, I mean, it really is truly odd to think like Santa will just stumbling all over the lies. But to certain you know, of his friend group, he really had such a good reputation. And that's why I think everybody is so shocked still within that friend group. Not even us. I think we're getting used to it. But I think some of them are still so shocked. But you see how much he tried to craft this weird narrative, but would still slip up because he's not that great of a liar, even though he seems to have done it quite a bit. So, and, and, you know, he's trying to get James, like, still be cool with James. And James is still kind of weirdly mad at Schwartz. It's just so the tangled web they weave. Back at Lala's office, she's still narrating the story. And Lala's like, Sandoval, go take your degenerate ass elsewhere. I'm watching you. You're a fucking mess. I'm at a barbecue over Labor Day. Your girlfriend's at home dealing with the loss of her grandmother. Tape rewinds again. And we show Sheena's vlog footage of that party. Thank God. We always kind of were like making fun of Sheena's vlog and like all of these other people taping things. But now, thank God they have it because cameras were not shooting that party. So thank God they have this. I do love when we cut to the footage of the party. We see Lala twerking. Like, you know, I was at this lit Labor Day party and it's like, uh, 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 uh. Lala narrates, this was a dope Labor Day party. And there was like a lot of fucking people. Sheena was there. Brock was there. Raquel Sandoval, which by the way, Jax Taylor was there. Um, we fast forward to, to a dinner with Lisa, Katie, Christina, Kelly, and Lala. Who came up with a rewind fast forward and relays the story to them? And uh, so Lala saying, the day that Ariana's grandmother dies, Tom Sandoval comes to the barbecue that I was at in Newport. Ariana was calling him furious. And he was like, okay, I'll come home right now. And he didn't leave for another two hours. And he was with Raquel all day long. Lala continues to narrate. Sandoval and Raquel are dancing alone at the Abbey. Sandoval stays at a fucking Labor Day party with Raquel while Ariana just found out that her grandmother died. And Raquel spends the night at Sandoval's house while Ariana is out of town. This leads me to only one logical conclusion. Back at her office now in the present, Lala goes, I think Sandoval has a thing for Raquel. And James is like, damn, Oh, damn, Daniel, damn. And Lala's like, and when Raquel has a little too much to drink, 
Right, 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 right. Oh, my God. If Tom is banging Rachel, like, that is just... Lala goes, the last time that Sandoval was talking about a woman, the way he talks about Raquel was when he was talking about Ariana to the group while he was with Kristen. Which, by the way, Lala wasn't on the show then, so I'm guessing either, you know, she was relayed stories or she just was a fan of the show or has just done her research over the years. We flash back to Sandoval in 2013. My dad had a comment of, Oh my God, he looks so young there. Having a meltdown in the Sur Alley with Jax. And Sandoval's like, I would actually love to be like, Kristen, you know what? Yes, I did. Yes, but guess what? Nothing happened between us. And then also in 2013, Sandoval, that scene we saw last week with Stassi, three years ago, me and Ariana made out in a swimming pool at the Golden Nugget. Yes. And Stassi's like, the Golden Nugget? Yes. And then we cut back to today and Lala's like, Tom and Ariana don't like focus on their relationship, which I think this is a pretty, this, this always, no matter who it is saying it, no matter what show, I always think it's kind of like, you know, people that aren't in long-term relationships, it's always weird when you get them talking about long-term relationships. Now this one didn't work out, but I know a lot, a lot of long-term relationships that have the way they go about their relationship. It's not that they don't focus on their relationship. It was just that when you're with somebody for that long, there's a natural trust that gets built up over time. Now, it is hard for Lala and James for me to hear them talk about long-term relationships when they really haven't had a lot past three, four, five years. You know, it's a different story when you're nearing that nine-year, 10-year mark. And James is like, that's true, but maybe the distance that they've got kind of works for them. And Lala's like, oh, come off it. You really think? And James is like, yeah. And Lala's like, no. And James is like, oh, crazy, oh, crazy. Lala's like, I think something's going on. I'm just going to call it like I see it. And she called it right. We return to Kayoma Oaks Ranch for Rachel's birthday. Raquel is running out of her yurt. She's like, hey, guys. And Ariana's like, what? And Sandoval's like, is everything okay? I'm sure Sandoval at this point is just like, what are you, are you about to bust me out? And Raquel's like, I forgot my makeup bag. And Ariana's are like, are you fucking kidding me? And they're all laughing like, oh. Tom laughs way too hard this whole episode. Anytime there's some kind of nervous moment, he laughs so like a hyena over it, which is, you know, when somebody laughs that hard that many times something is up always pay attention in those moments when somebody over laughs whether it be joe pesci and god goodfellas or tom sandoval and vanderpump rules also raquel you know is somebody that does greatly benefit from makeup uh i do like that they called her that that they looked like a bag of shit earlier which i will say schwartz uh a lot of time looks like a giant bag of shit he just doesn't try and when he cleans up he looks good the camera zoom in on a sign hanging at the glamping area and it says not all who wander are lost what does it mean folks what does that mean i'm so i'm like oh my god is this another hidden message in vanderpump rules i mean it <laughs> They did another sign last or the Oliver episode a couple of weeks ago. They focused on like a, a sign. And I'm just like, what are they telling us? Not all who wander are lost. Is this something about Sandoval wandering or straying away from Ariana? Anyway, she was like, how does it feel to be the only person here in your 20s? I keep forgetting Rachel is 28 years old, which even makes it weirder with the Sandoval thing. Because he's like then 13, 14 years older. And Ariana's like, that's true. And Raquel's like, I love being the youngest. I want to make a little toast. I wanted to cheers to be surrounded by good friends and good vibes. This is exactly what I wanted to do for my birthday. And uh, yeah, a toast to you guys. Raquel, remember uh, her storyline last season or the season before was she, I don't know how to do a fucking toast. How stupid is that? So now look at her doing a toast, still pretty bad, but you know, she got it out, but it is horrible. Good friends and good vibes. Raquel in a talking head, continues to bury herself deeper this entire episode and goes, these are like my true core people. These are my forever friends. These are the people looking out for me who believe in me. That means everything to me. Um, the way, you know, she said me uh, last count, like 8 billion times in those couple of sentences, which you've got to really pay attention to. But it's it's disgusting. It's angering. It's horrible. I I, I can't. I, I really am so curious why Sandoval continues to try to show his face. Which, by the way, he did a show in Westbury, New York tonight, and somebody DM'd me that were there and said there was like thirty or there were like sixty people there. They had to offer two for one tickets, and it was uh, it was not it was not a good scene. And you almost feel bad, except that 
he didn't have to do this. And he also should have canceled the tour once this happened. He needed to, in his words, dip out. He should have dipped out, dude. You've got to dip out and you have to take time. Raquel, Rachel has dipped out. She should not be coming back for a while and really start to really think about this stuff because what she says here in these next couple of moments are, are just horrible. These are not your forever friends. They aren't. And they would have been. They really would have been. But you chose to betray your forever friend. So now you've got one forever friend, potentially, if we really think Sandoval and her are going to last. She was like, how is back home, Ariana? And Ariana's like, um, well, obviously, it was awful circumstances. It's a very weird, weird feeling. They're all at this picnic, by the way, this picnic table. It's very weird feeling... Uh, you know, to go home and not see my grandma. Cause like, I always made a point of seeing her as much as possible. She's funny, sassy. And yes, I miss her. I just keep thinking like, I wish I could talk to her and she begins to get emotional and Sheena gives her a hug, but they're all watching this. Raquel's right across from her. Sandoval is, uh, you know, uh, two seats down and he's watching and Brock's like, I think you can mate. She's here with you. And Ariana's like, yeah. And then Sandoval suddenly feels sad for his girlfriend. And he like wipes his eyes a little performative there. And Ariana, and I talk and I was like, it's been a really hard year for me losing Charlotte. Now losing my grandma. I'm, uh, I'm not well, I'm really barely hanging on to be honest. Okay. That's horrible because we know a really big thing. That's horrible. That's going to happen to her. And I thought about this. You'd be like, well, Sandoval's there. Like, oh my God, he's, he's, you know, he, he's, you know, that's why he's not going to tell her. Cause you had such a tough year, but really come on. That's bullshit. Think that through, walk that through your mind a little bit of like, no, he knew it was going to be tough on him. If he really, like he would have ended it with Raquel. And by the way, you know, there were times, like he was the one that kept this going, like, uh, you know, from a very high place source, Raquel, Rachel tried to say, you know, uh, the quote I got was like, if this is how it's going to be, you might as well stay with Ariana. Cause she didn't feel um, good in the relationship at one point because she wasn't getting enough attention for herself. Um, so it's, it's, you know, the, he doesn't get brownie points for, you know, if this really was, he, he should have just stopped cheating until he could have broken up with her. You know, the, 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 there was no way this was a selfless act. It was all selfish. Ariana says, did anything happen while I was out of town? And Raquel's like, there was a food tasting for the new menu at sir. And I was an hour and 30 minutes late. And Schwartz is like, Oh, I heard you look like a bag of shit. Uh, I mean, me. And Raquel's like, I did. And Ariana laughs and is like, what? Sandoval in a talking head wearing the same blouse uh, when he lied to the producer through his teeth about being physical with Raquel. Which, by the way, the reason why he's in the same costuming is that they'll do the talking heads for a couple of episodes in a row. And that's why there's talking head looks. If they need to ask follow-up questions, you'll see them in another look. But they try to knock out a bunch of questions for a bunch of episodes at one go. So Sandoval's like, on beat day, like Schwartz and Raquel and I all like took a car back to my house. Uh, once again, Schwartz being his cover, jumped in the jacuzzi, hung out, had some drinks, listened to music. God, could you imagine being their neighbors? You're like, uh, I think there's a bunch of pigs fucking in the back. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Back to Raquel's rendition. Uh, she's like, I took a jacuzzi after we went out. Ariana's like, Yeah, we always do that. Because I will say, they do always have friends over. They are always in the pool. Like, this is not abnormal. So it is kind of the perfect cover. And Raquel's like, Yeah. And like, I stayed the night and I was on the couch. And Sandoval's like, I was like, Dude, go upstairs, dude. And Ariana's like, Go to the guest room. You don't have to sleep on the couch. Sandoval's goes, She's like scrunched up in there or something. The three of them are sitting across lying to Ariana. Just this, just so fucking gross. And Sheena's like, Brock said you guys lied and said you didn't stay the night. And Schwartz is like, ominous. They're all laughing for some reason. Now they flash back to Brock's rendition of the excuses. Uh, Brock, Sir Manager Peter Madragali, Schwartz and Scandaball are sitting on the cement on an outdoor basketball court. And Santa was like, you came back, dude. Raquel grabbed Graham and dipped out. And Brock goes, all right, who slept over? You guys made your after party. Did Raquel stay? No, she went home. And Santa was like, yeah. And Schwartz is like, yeah, I did. We had a little slumber party. Sandoval and I talking about on the heels of, you know, like the open relationship rumor and obviously Schwartz and Raquel making out in Mexico. Like we just thought maybe it'd be better if everyone didn't know that little detail. 
back at the glamp, Scannable's like, well, the funny thing is, I wasn't lying. She did dip out. Like, she went and, like, passed out. So dip out also means leave, but now in Sandoval's vernacular, it also means passed out. And Sheena's laughing. And is like, ah, yeah, they stayed. Everyone at the table is really laughing. Like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Like, they all think this is funny when it's, like, horrifying. Sandoval continues in a talking head. I was fully going to tell Ariana, but, like, we should have just told the truth. Like, stupid oh, dumb fan of all dude i did it again and brock's like three stooges you didn't help yourselves and shorts is like no we made it worse the line doesn't help anyone and they all laugh again we move on back to the city where they're prepping for lala beauty's photo shoot you got lala christina kelly and katie getting glammed with makeup the music is another song of like forever young we're gonna be forever young and lala's like all right, my loves, here's your bathrobes. And Christina's like, oh, thank you. And they're like, oh my God, soft, soft. So I guess this is selling the bathrobes. Lala and Italian goes, I am so proud of Give Them Lala. It's really what I rely on to support my daughter. My kids, my kid wants to go to college one day. That's what's going to send her. A photographer takes various shots of the three of them in the house and around the pool. Lala continues in a talking head. This is about bitches, supporting bitches. I'm proud of all my friends right now. <laughs> <laughs> They're a beautiful home solely for the purpose of photographs, but they also hang out to have a scene around the pool and catch up after they're finished. Christina's like, you have this for the whole day, right? And Lala's like, yeah, let's chill for a second. And Christina's like, you guys, what did the Dawn and Satchel think of the other night? Were they just losing their minds? And Katie's like, he, um, he couldn't understand why everyone was just so mean to me. And I'm like, Katie, <laughs> Did you tell him, welcome to Vanderpump Rules? <laughs> These are the rules of Vanderpump. We are mean here and we are not. We are horrible, horrible, horrible people. It is funny to have people come into that environment, I wonder, if they're not aware of the show. Because <clears throat> it was pointed out to me and I've got to remind myself of like, people usually aren't like this. <laughs> I'm literally dying. People aren't like this and they shouldn't be. And I think, <clears throat> you know, this bad behavior... A lot of friend groups don't do this to each other. And especially, uh, you know, sometimes people age out of their childishness. And I think with reality television, you're encouraged to stay as a, like your arrested development from this, the year you start that reality television is sometimes where you emotionally stay for, I don't know, the rest of your days or as long as you're on that reality television show. Um, by the way, on Lala's podcast about the beach day, she said that they cut out the part where Satchel spoke up and told everyone to give Ch Katie a chance to speak. Everyone thought Satchel never said a word, but he did in support of her. Somebody had uh, messaged me and said, I think Satchel was a paid extra. And I'm like, oh my God, give it a rest. But um, he did speak up. I do wonder what his voice like. What's what's going on? Everybody let Katie speak. Like, I don't even know what his voice sounds like. What if it's like, I let everybody let Katie speak. What, what kind of voice it is, is it? What's going on? Let Katie speak, yo. Um, Christina says, that night, the things that were said were so disgusting that I genuinely think that they wake up and don't go, hmm, maybe I shouldn't have said that. And Lala's like, they meant everything they said. And Katie's like, yeah, yeah. But they were, it was vitriol the way it was. It was like, because they were coming at you and Sandoval was telling me to take accountability. We cut to Be Beach Day and Sandoval just like, looks like he's roided out he's like you take no accountability for your breakup katie you know what you shouldn't be with somebody for who you want them to be you should be with them for who they fucking are and katie's like bitch get a life um but think about what sandoval said a little bit more like you should be with them for you should be with them like sh you should have celebrated schwartz's um, cheating on you and being very extremely lazy in your relationship. You need to sell, you need to find love for that person, the person that strays. <laughs> Katie goes, he was so hell bent in believing that I'm spreading this rumor about him and Ariana having an open relationship. And Lala goes, well, it's not far fetched. Little Lala's like, yeah. And she's like, I hooked up with Ariana in the back of his car while he drove. And had we been in a bedroom, he probably would have participated. It's not that far fetched, which by the way, now, 
Uh, listen, listen, I wish Sheena's vlog camera was there that night. I really am truly, I've still always talked about like, what are the dynamics? Like, how did you get over the seat? You know, or did you trip your like, you know, cause I'm thinking like your shins are getting hurt and Tom's like, this is so hot, dude. I'm driving down sunset. Should I get on the freeway? Like he's all boned up. And at a certain point, like, I'm like, did he try? Did he like, let's find a bedroom, dude. Let me get into this, dude. Like, did he whack off? Like, I'm, I know these are like adult questions, but I'm an adult so I can ask him. But like, you know, what was the... Like what? Like were they like oh? Or like finished? And Tom was like oh my god, that's so hot. Like were there like did Tom like take pictures? Like was there a crash almost? I mean, imagine that. Imagine like you know never being able to walk again because Sandoval crashes a car while you're going. Anyways, I I'm about to like ex, ex, uh, explode. Um. So. Uh, <laughs> Katie goes, it doesn't matter. I didn't even say that. Why are they trying to lie? goes, no. But since it's out there with them thinking that you did say that, let's break it down, really. And Christina's like, does Ariana even care? She doesn't care to question. And Katie goes, she does. She doesn't care to question, but she cares if people talk about it. Because I really think Ariana truly trusted him. So it was like, yes. Like, I, I mean, I, I don't know how to keep, you know, she trusted Tom. So I think that it's, it's so funny when people get angry at Ariana. It was like, well the onus is on her dude. You know, like she should have questioned not that that's what they're saying, but a lot of people in some, as of the discourse and it's like, Oh yeah. Yeah. We should uh, blame Ariana for trusting her partner. Like, aren't we taught that you should be with a partner that you trust? Like, isn't that what the goal is in a relationship? And it's like, huh, idiot. She didn't, you know, she should have not trusted that person she was with. And then she wouldn't have been in this situation. It's like, come on, you guys. Lala and the net goes, something doesn't smell right with this Raquel and Sandoval friendship. And little Lala's like, I don't smell right. <laughs> she goes, I know better than anybody that when you have a dude who's your best friend and who's been there through difficult times and then you add alcohol, you end up sitting on their face. Which, by the way, my dad was like, oh, my dad loved that line because he's a, a weirdo. Uh, he's like, you end up sitting on their face. And little Lala's like, yeah, you end up... <laughs> Lala goes, I sit on faces. I'm little Lala. My dad laughed and he goes, remind, he goes, reminds me of me and your mom's first date. And then I high-fived him. Uh, Christina goes, he really did say that. I didn't high-five him, but he really did say it. And Christina Kelly goes, so I'm doing the heart spring party in the back garden, like at Tom, Tom, I'm just celebrating like the new lemon scrub and just different things. By the way, you know, I always, I, you know, you're like, Ryan, what do you like to celebrate? And I'm like, well, number one, lemon scrubs, always two birthdays, three holidays, but one lemon scrubs, you give me a lemon scrub. I'm like, why is there not a party for this lemon scrub? Um, so she's doing a little party for her products. We've seen stuff like this in reality shows since the beginning of time, it's just an opportunity for everybody to come and fight with each other. She's like, well, just like have some drinks, hang out, and it'll be a nice little evening. And Katie's like, can my mom come if she's in town? Terry Maloney, what up? Terry is my favorite mom on Bravo. Uh, she's supposed to come in town this weekend, so she'd love to see And Christine's like, oh yeah, have her come. And Lala goes, I love that. And Katie's like, well, she's here to help me with like sandwich stuff, and I want her to see the space. And Christine's like, you guys have such like a creative, like, I love this. I love doing the shoot, the sandwich stuff. Like this is women supporting women. I have to say, Christina Kelly trying to make like this all positive because that would be the goal of any of this is like a real creative enterprise, you know, this meeting of the minds instead of just everybody talking about who's fucking who. But like, you know, when I, when I was trying to be an actor in Los Angeles and stuff, it's, um, you love that when you're with people of like, Oh my God, let's try to do a play or let's write this or like, you know, other people that kind of like, uh, get behind your creativity even now it's like really fun to be in a creative space with other creatives and really try to to make things work i i i don't know i just love i love the sentiment of this and i wish you know poor christina kelly you know it's like yeah but you probably had to watch a lot of fights get called a lot of names over the season so hopefully your lemon scrub is doing pretty good we're back at the glamping in koyama and sheena's like let's go check out the other year i want to get a video which Sheena's like, I'm going to vlog. Sheena, by the way, I don't get to see a lot of her vlogs, but I mean, I'm sure she's pretty successful in YouTube. I mean, it is, I think it was very good of her to, it very, had a lot of foresight to get it started when she did years ago. And they're laying on pillows to talk. And Ariana's like, I feel like literally I haven't seen you since your wedding, basically. And she's like, I know, I miss you. And Ariana's like, I miss you too. And Ariana goes, so I heard like bits and pieces, like Schwartz uh, started to tell me about the beach day. And she was like, well, James and Schwartz were fighting. And James was like, how dare you bring up my engagement? Yeah, it was like a lot. But then we went to the bar after and Katie's like sitting there. And then Sandoval confronts her about this open relationship rumor. But it was just like, no one was getting anywhere. Allie told me the other day, 
day that Katie insinuated that y'all have an open relationship. Which, by the way, this alley comment, which if you take it, by the way, this is when we need that stupid rewind feature, like, is that wasn't exactly what Ali just said. She thought it was weird. And it was weird. It turned out it was weird. But Katie wasn't going there fucking. Katie wasn't going to have an open relationship. So it is very interesting how this game of telephone kind of went down the line. Because Ali yelled at James for this. And, Allie, you know, like, all of this stuff, like... You know, and Sheena by this moment, remember, hates Katie. So, of course, anything that Katie is involved in, Sheena's going to be like, what a horrible bitch. Oh, my God. We flash back to that day with Allie and Allie uh, goes like Katie was like, oh, yeah, Tom and Ariana have like no rules or something. And Ariana goes, we don't have that. kind. No, no, we don't have that kind of. Well, not to knock any beat buddy that does and she goes no but i i even said even if they did it's so fucked up that you like just told someone's private business and ariana goes well she texted me something that day and then we see text from katie and ariana goes hope beach day is fun and katie goes update it was not fun lol also apologies for the garbage that is going around i absolutely am not spreading rumors about you and tom i don't know why some people desperately want to believe the worst of me constantly but i don't know how it's come to this none of it makes sense to me in retrospect, Katie, once again, right in that moment, Ariana goes, obviously, I want to believe that you didn't say that, but is that what I believe? No, I believe she said it. Ariana, the talking head goes, I get it. Katie hates Raquel, but like Raquel's my friend and she's someone that is kind and sweet and loyal and just a delight, a delight since the day I met her. Zoiks! Ariana goes, well, we'll find out, won't we? And she goes, Yeah. It's evening at the glamping and the owner host, Nate, is getting the food ready. And so he's like, it's dinner time, bitches. We have roasted chicken. We got cheesy bread over here. We have a salad. And that is homemade ranch dressing. You guys know I'm a ranch freak. You know, like I know that's like, you know, but I can I can tell you the when I moved from Kansas to Arizona and I like in high school, it was Barrow's Pizza. There's a chain of pizza restaurants that I love. Barrow's Pizza here. Oh, for some reason, I just it, it, Barrow's Pizza to me tastes like freedom because I remember I when a freshman in high school, you know, coming from Kansas, small town, big town in Arizona. And these seniors took me out for lunch to this place called Barrow's one day off campus. And I remember it, how do you mean Barrow's Pizza? And they said, you know, hey, try your pizza with ranch dressing. And I was like, what? what? Cause I, you know, I was like, Kansas, like, what? we don't put ranch on pizza. I was like, what are you guys? And then I was like, are you guys on drugs? And I did. And it was, it tasted like freedom. I was like, I've never tasted anything this good. And to that, but it's those moments when you're growing up when like, you know, that's like mixed in freedom and discovering something for a lot of people, unfortunately that is drugs when you're younger. But for me, it was like ranch. I'm like, what? And I was like, Oh my God. When I went to, back to visit Kansas, <laughs> I put like ranch on my pizza now. And sometimes I'll have like pineapple on it. It's crazy. Um, so, uh, Raquel goes, Oh hell yeah. And then a fucking, you know, left <laughs> double left foot Raquel drops and spills the homemade ranch dressing. And, you know, like Raquel, you know, Raquel's like, I'm going to get back at all of you. I'm going to sleep with all of your husband boyfriends. Sheena goes, the homemade ranch. And Raquel goes, sorry. I wonder if she's that klutzy in the bedroom. <laughs> Santa was like, ow, my balls. Ah! <laughs> sorry. They sit to eat and Sheena's like, oh my God, this ranch is so good. And Raquel's like, this is delicious. And Schwartz is like, fresh from the garden. Raquel goes, Sandoval points to his face. You have a little, so sorry, Raquel goes, Sandoval, you have a little like on your cheek. And Sandoval, what, I was like, what are you, like semen? What are we talking I, I know I keep saying semen, but now I just can't stop thinking about them boning every chance they get. I'm like, meet me behind the yurt. Sandoval wipes it with a napkin. And I'm wondering if this is like a cutesy moment for them and their stupid little deluded heads. Raquel's like, you got it. And he locks eyes and smiles at her. Schwartz goes, that's a stereotypical red flag if you have glitter on your face as a dude. And Ariana goes, yeah, I feel like you come in contact with so much glitter all the time. Raquel is taking a bite from an ear of corn. It's like, she goes, oh, fuck, I bit my lip. Um, the way she ate the ear of corn, she was like, I, you know. <laughs> oh, my God, the way she went. I need like a two week break. <laughs> Raquel eating corn. <laughs> Poor Tom. <laughs> Sports goes, 
that's only going to exacerbate her taste for blood. I don't want to like kill the vibe, but like Raquel has a type. And Schwartz is like, um, so Brock, Tom, be careful tonight. And Sandoval's smirking, like, where are you going with it, dude? And Sandoval's like, uh, okay. And Brock's like, what's our type? And Raquel goes, a type for blood? And Schwartz is like, no, men who are taken. And Sandoval, this is when he's like, ha, ha. Oh my god! Oh my god! Can you, man? Oh my god! Dave, Dave Chappelle over there! Oh my god! That's amazing! Like, gee, dude, it was so crazy. I mean, in that moment, everybody, Ariana should have stepped away from the table of like, okay, obviously you're, you're cheating. <laughs> like, it was like everybody in this moment knows. And sure, you know, this is so fucking weird, you guys. It really is. And um, Raquel goes, I thought you were talking about vampire status. And Schwartz goes, I'm toasty and pulls off his hoodie. Sheena's like, Schwartz thinks it's kind of hot in here. And Ariana goes, Raquel, what was your peach of the age of 27 and your pit? And Raquel goes, oh, maybe a peach and a pit breaking up with James. Because I feel like that was really difficult. And I had the balls to do it. So I'm proud of myself for that. And of course, I've met you guys through that relationship with James. And a lot of people would call that social climbing. But I really, <laughs> but we've created our own friendships. That's like super special to me. And I just appreciate each and every one of your friendships. Oh, my God. And in this pageant speech, I will tell you why we need to have peace in the world. Sandoval's getting all worked up. He's like, seeing you get so much more confidence, like come into who you are, like showing up at Lala's birthday, like doing all this fucking badass shit. Sorry, I'm impassioned. Doing all this badass shit, dude. Dip it out, dude. I'm fucking proud of you, Raquel. You're fucking coming to your own motherfucker. He's like, I mean, just turn it into a demon. Like, ever like, whoa. He just like laughed like a hanging. And now he's like, dude, I'm getting so fucking loud. And Raquel goes, can we cheers to 28? They cheer. Oh, by the way, uh, Jennifer Lopez even had a comment on Scandal today on the Today Show, I think, which that led me to believe, like, wouldn't it be insane if, like, at, um, at Taylor Swift's, like, next concert, she wears a shirt of, like, Raquel's a fugly, you know, Alex. <laughs> Like Tom, Tom has a lisp. Like she gives us a hint that she's like, you know, like <laughs> be wary of a man who dips out. Um, they all cheers and Chino looking at her phone goes, Christina Kelly's having an event at Tom Tom tomorrow. And she was like, yeah, she texted me and asked me about it. And she's like, she said, Hey, I'm having a little party for my skincare brand. Heart spring at Tom Tom tomorrow. You Brock and summer should come by, which by the way, does summer, it is, is summer of drinking age. Can she actually legally? No, she goes, starts at seven 30. Are you guys still going? And Ariana goes, I don't have my phone on me. And Raquel goes, I haven't been invited. And she goes, I just got it right now. And Schwartz to Raquel goes, you can be my date. And Ariana goes, oh, my God. And everyone's like, oh. And George is like, wait, I was kidding. That's the bit I do. It's like not a funny joke. And then I say it's a joke. And Ariana's like real bold. And Raquel goes, I would love to come as your friend. And George goes, yeah, of course. And my date. Oh, you know, pick a lane, dude. Are you creepy? Are you a friend? Are you a good guy? Are you a bad guy? Just pick the lane. Maybe you'll do that on your new Fox reality show where you go to Mars. I'll tell you about that in part two of this, you guys. Raquel goes, yeah. And they bump fists. And Raquel goes, so like, can I be your friend date? And she was like, yeah. And Raquel goes, okay, cool. And everybody laughs. Sandoval tries to look happy. He's like, at least, at least he's going to be close to me. Nate walks up. It's like, children, children, fire time. And Ariana's like, yay. And I'm like, let's do it. And they're sitting around the fire and Ariana's like, oh, it's toasty. And Raquel goes, now that I'm 28, I'm going to totally fucking destroy you. I'm going to take everything. You know, she goes, now that I'm 28, I'm going to get my shit together. I just feel a little bit of pressure from my parents because they're like, who the fuck are you? No, they're like, what are you doing with your life? I mean, I mean, listen, she's young, but she is 28. Like, dude. 
Um, Ariana's like, well, what about pageants and stuff? And Raquel goes, oh, I age out, so I can't ever compete again. Remember, there is an aging out of pageant. Uh, I think the Miss California or the Miss uh, USA, there is a cutoff limit um, uh, installed by whoever owns that pageant. And yes, I do know who owns that, but I don't want to talk about that. But she is, she's aged out of pageant life. And Raquel's like, oh, and Ariana goes, didn't, didn't they say they were going to extend? And Raquel goes, I don't think they're going to extend it. Which, by the way, even if they extend it, Raquel's like, okay, good. You now have a career. I mean, pageants is a great way for women to kind of find themselves and confident and hopefully inspire other women. But like as a career, like I had Taylor Hale from Big Brother on this week, I believe, right? It was a this week and she was amazing. Go and check it out. It was Tuesday's episode. And she talks about being in pageants and like there, like you can see directly how pageants helped her and how strong and confident she is, which by the way, I really fell in love with Taylor Hale from big brother. You guys need to say Tyler Hale. Um, you guys need to check out that, uh, that interview. She was just fabulous. And we even did talk about, uh, sorry, Taylor Hale. We did talk about Scandaval. Um, but, I saw, you know, she made me appreciate pageants where you're like, oh, I, it really is this skill and it really does teach women. I feel like Raquel, sometimes I can't see what it teaches her, uh, what it taught her, you know, um, it, it's very confusing to me. Uh, so Raquel's like, that was a big dream of mine to meet Miss California and to be a role model for girls and women. That was a bit, by the way, my parents both like snickered when she said that that was a big motivation to me. And I made sure every aspect of my life was consistent where I wasn't going to fuck up in a talking that she goes, I've always been the good girl. But now that I've aged out of pageants, I don't have to worry so much about my reputation. <laughs> yeah, no shit. So honestly, I feel like I'm making up for lost time right now. So much to dig into right there. You can chart a new course and not completely destroy any of the things that you were taught in your past. You are not, I mean, I, I hate to, you know, kick her when she's dead. I know I don't hate to, I mean, I, I hate to point this out, but like, this is the opposite of any kind of role model for a girl or a woman. Like where, where are you basing any of your actions in your life right now? Like how lost are you? Like th guys, this is what being on a reality show can do to you. This is, is not, not fun. Do you think this is fun? Do you think this is, and the person who said, oh, Lisa's paying them off. They have tons of money. Lisa's paying Raquel and Tom off. No, 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 she is not. Remember, <laughs> Lisa, first off, is infamously cheap. D you know, will not even pay back rent on some of her location. I mean, like, come on, like, really, you know, but this is what, it, this is the chasing of fame. And this is what it gets you. You abandon all of your principles. You get talked into lunacy and you put, you know, you, you, Everything that you grew up wanting to be, you turn your back on. I don't know where, like, what was your, what would, that's like, I mean, we need Howie Mantel on this because I really want to know what her end goal was to be and when she decided to abandon all of these principles. I mean, she's even outwardly talking about this out loud. Um, and being a good girl, you can still be a bad girl and still be good and, you know, have principles and things that you're shooting for. Um, and, you know, I don't have to worry so much about my reputation. Worry a little bit, like un piquito, a little bit, a little bit. Um, feel like you're lost, making up for lost time. I don't know. Like, I don't know if she looks at other people and goes, oh, well, I want to be more like Lala. Like, she's like crazy. And she talks about making out with people and like sleeping. Like, I, I don't know where she's getting like her, her playbook. And is this where Tom's coming in and going like, you know, because Tom is acting like this is all love and stuff, but there's a huge sexual component to what the, this Tom relationship, you know, and even him on how he's like, you know, when, I, you know, I, I was having sex so infrequently that like it would be like having sex with an eighth grader, you know, that didn't even have his moves, you know, and it's like you're so obsessed with like being good in the bedroom and being like, just be a porn star, dude. Like that seems to be the end goal for you is to be really good in bed. And you felt like you were losing your mojo. And that's not even mojo. That's just like losing you as a sex god in your head. And I feel like him and Raquel really bumped peepees, as Lala would say to her mom. And that was a huge component of their relationship, I believe, was sex. Um, truly. Um, so Ariana, still being a good friend, says, you guys... You know, you're going through these things since your breakup with James and getting through that and like being you is, I think, even more of something that is being role model behavior. 
And Ariana puts her arm around her for a warm, genuine hug. And I wish at that point she had just sucker punched her in the gut. But Raquel starts to cry. But it's not a cry like, oh, my God, what am I doing to Ariana? It's a, cry, it's a selfish cry. Ariana, you know, Ar you know, Raquel, even in this moment, is able to try to take other people's energy. Ariana confronts her, you know, sorry, Ar Ariana comforts her, hugs her, and then she goes, you smell like Tom's balls. No, no, I'm joking. But what did it have been? I'm like, what's that smell? You smell like Tom's asshole. Raquel continues their talking and the crazy thing about pageants is the fact you kind of have the career. You kind of have to have a career path put in place. So I decided I wanted to be an occupational therapist the first time I competed in a pageant. So I think it's just like, ah, she breaks down. Ah, my entire life plan was kind of like written out for me at a very young age and it scares me. And now you're 28, girl. Boo-hoo. You're not fucking royalty. This isn't fucking Prince William and Harry. Oh, my life was out there. You know, like, you did pageants. I did the Boy Scouts for a little bit. It didn't really affect me after, you know, 15 at all. Like, get over it. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, live in the real world with us, please. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry to have to, like, really kind of, you know, lay down the law here. But get over yourself. And also, occupational therapist is amazing job. And you're not doing shit with that either. You haven't aged out of being an occupational therapist. Let me remind you. It's not like, well, once we've aged out of pageants, I can't do the thing that I said I was going to do. No, you've chosen to chase whatever this fucking reality show dream of yours is. And each week that goes by, I realize, man, how important this show is to her. Santa goes, wait, Raquel, Ariana, and I got you a gift. And he's like, Vintage Versace 1990 sunglasses. Oh, by the way, I will say this. When he goes, me and Ariana got you a gift. My dad goes, an impression of my penis. I shit you not. This is literally what he said. Raquel goes, what? Shut the fuck up. Are you serious? <laughs> what? Um, Ariana's like, yes. Which, by the way, like, do you think Tom made Ariana pay half? Like, so gross. And Schwartz is like, oh, cool. I feel bad I didn't get you anything. And Raquel goes, that's okay. You can give me a kiss. And Sandoval laughs super loud again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Schwartz goes, I love that this is such, like, a lighthearted banter with us. The other people in my life, like, huh, I've been, like, vilified, like, for this. And Raquel goes, you know, and the people that fucking, you know what? The people that fucking vilified kissing, that's really fucked up. Whatever. I love when Raquel takes a stand and you're like, what are you, huh? The, you know, like, Raquel, they're not taking a stand against kissing. They're taking a stand against Schwartz kissing you. There's a difference. I'm like, the people in this world that say kissing is wrong, we need to kiss. It's how we procreate. Schwartz is like, you know what? Maybe you shouldn't come tomorrow to Christina Kelly's. Like, I'm seriously thinking about it. It's an intimate event. And Raquel's like, are you serious? And Schwartz is like, yeah, because, like, me and Katie are really going to war right now. I think we might get divorced. No, no. Ari goes, Katie's mindset is that Schwartz is rubbing it in her face or something. And she's like, okay, I'll ask her. I'll say, I'm with Raquel right now. Can she go? Sheena always has a plan and she plans it to the word. I really, I will like, it is funny. I, I, the first time I was on shenanigans and remember, you know, Sheena and I had a little thing where she was upset at me for a long time. And all of a sudden, Jamie Lynn, who, like I said, I was on her podcast this week. It, I'm trying to remember the story, but all of a sudden I was supposed to be on Jamie Lynn's podcast. Sheena got wind of it and was like, no, I don't want him on yours, I think. And then it was like, well, he can come on mine and tell the story first and then he can go on yours. I'm trying to remember the exact story, but all of a sudden, like, I was like, what? And all of a sudden Sheena is like texting me out of the blue. Like I've never at, at that point I hadn't texted Sheena before. And Sheena was like, ready to go. Like she was all like, had all of this planned out. Sheena is really good at, you know, she might not be good at reading like situations, but she's really good at like making things happen like this to this to this, or that that's at least what I've noticed when dealing with her. Um, so Ariana's like, uh, yeah, yeah. You know what? Uh, say that, say that. And Raquel's like, I respect other people. It's not like I have no respect for any people. 
oh, dude, like why you make it so easy on us to fucking meme you rag on you. Like, yeah, Raquel, this means you have no respect for other people. This is actually what that means. In fact, I'm starting to believe like Raquel, could you um, uh, spell respect and use it in a sentence? Like, I'm curious if she knows what any of these words mean because none of her actions line up. Like where, where do you think that she has respect? Like, where do you think? And by the way, I am curious what if like, I'm, are you curious if they're in Mali on this scene? If they're like, you know, I don't know, like they're in a yurt in the desert. Like I do, I am, I am, I do wonder in the scene if they're on something. Um, Shorts is like, it'll just add more fuel to this imaginary fire. Cause it truly is imaginary. The relationship isn't between Schwartz and Raquel. But I was like, I know. Sandoval stands up and gets all De Niro. He's like, who gives a fuck, dude? Get over your fucking life, man. And we're like, we're like, fuck off. Ariana's like, Tom. And Raquel laughs very hard. Um, and Sandoval and I talking to him, like, if Katie's mad at you, you can't come to this event. If you said something Katie doesn't like, you should call in sick to third because she's gonna be there. It's very entitled in my world you completely lie and just do it anyway then lie about it and then dip out sheena screams like i got a text which by the way is a very way the the she goes you guys got a text the the inner joke there you guys with i got a text is she is a fan of the show love island a british reality show that i fell in love with last season they also have an american version an australian version but that's what they do they're like i got a text and ariana says a love island quote later on in this episode of like can i pull you for a chat to katie because that's what they say on love island as well it's very charming at first it's a little disorienting but then you end up falling in love with the show ariana also has a love of island water bottle she had in last uh, week's episode. Uh, and by the way, I've had many conversations with Ariana about Love Island. I believe in that conversation we had in October on the podcast, we talked about it, but we would text about Love Island a couple of times because I was such a huge fan of that show. And so was she, she even liked the Australian version better, I remember. Um, so Schwartz is like, what's up? And Raquel's like, what did she say? And she's like, okay, yeah, you can come. And they all scream in amazement and clap. And Sandoval stands up and kicks the air and like does his robot dance. He's like, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, this, this. Ariana's looking at him strange for doing that. Like, dude, what is going on? The gang gets comfy in the yurt as you do in a yurt with the two queen beds. And they've all got you guys, the galaxy light returns may the fourth be with you yet your galaxy lights shine up on a yurt tent raquel wearing her new vinti versace sunglasses goes this is like everything i could ever want on my birthday it's incredible <laughs> and Ariana's like we love you raquel sandoval who's been sitting on the floor stands up and hugs her on the bed and goes love you raquel and Ariana goes, you deserve to have a good birthday. And Raquel's sobbing. It's like a dream, you guys. <laughs> I mean, she really, oh God, so fucking, we wasted a good yurt birthday on you. They dance and party the night away in the yurt with the galaxy lights. But my God, didn't it, didn't that yurt look fun as fuck? Didn't that look amazing? I, I mean, I, I got to tell you, I want to have homemade rent dressing. I want a yurt experience. I even like the galaxy light. I just don't want Raquel to be anywhere near there or Schwartz to uh, Sandoval to come in with his, uh, you know, Red Bull and vodka uh, intensity. The next morning, Brock and Sheena shove off. We're like, we got to go back and get Summer Moon. The others pack up in the car, head out too. We're back in LA at Katie's apartment in Valley Village. And we get Terry Maloney, Katie's mom. Terry Maloney truly is the nicest lady. Uh, and by the way, just a little uh, sneak peek for next week. If they leave it in, um, there's a big fight with Raquel where I believe Katie's mom, Terry, has a very nice big scene. I think she has a moment. And Terry's like, I just love the coziness of your living room, Katie. You've done such a great job with it. I'm so excited for Friday to see your space for the sandwich shop. And Katie's like, there's a lot we have to still do. I always think it's funny when kids put their moms to work. And I also think it's funny that mom, you know, that moms never, um, they never stop being moms, you know, they never stop being moms. And, uh, uh, you know, it's like every place I've lived, my mom's always come, you know, yeah they never stop being moms uh so terry's like uh of course talk about full circles like oh my god she worked for me for so many oh yeah she worked for me for so many years now i'm gonna be working for you and katie laughs katie's like clean my toilet lala and her mom we cut to them and by the way is this the first time we've seen lala's mom or like heard her because it was like i'm like oh now i know exactly why lala is the way i'm like oh this is 
you know, I mean, I feel like Lala Kent should be Lala Jr. Because Lisa, her mom, they're taking their talks for a walk and and Lisa Lala's like, you know, are we going to walk around the camel toe right there? Cause there's a, like a little dirt divot. And I'm like, okay, here we go. And Lala's like, I've been talking with that boy that I bump peepees with. And Lisa, her mom's like, what have you guys been talking about? Or do I want to know? And Lala's like, well, even when you don't want to know, I tell you And they laugh. And Lisa goes, and I'm like, la, 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 la. And she wags her tongue rapidly as to drown out what Lala might be telling her. And Lala goes, that's what he does too. Cause um, Lala is talking about, you know, ear muffet for the kids. Licking her vagina. Yeah. That's what they're talking about. And they all laugh. But I was like, I now, that was a huge piece filled in for me with Lala, with her mom. I actually need to see way more of Lala's mom on this show now. Now we cut to Allie in her uh, apartment with James on Miracle Mile. And Allie's like, here you are, Mr. Banks. You're going to take your cone off today. That's their cat. <laughs> what if it was just a guy in the corner? Uh, James removes the cone. He's like, oh, he's so happy. Look at him. Allie's like, oh, that has to feel good. Mr. Banks is furiously scratching around his neck because Mr. Banks has a puncture wound in his neck now is it no james like how do you feel after beach day ali and ali goes well i didn't i feel like i didn't even see you you were like fighting with lala and then fighting with raquel and then fighting with schwartz sorry i didn't mean to embarrass you like that i took their imagine festival very seriously ali goes you you embarrassed yourself you know there's obviously anger and james like there's no anger there's no anger behind what i did James also, what an amazing just bullshitter. Like, no, that was loving throwing a beer. No, no anger. No, no. It's just, no, it was, it was a loving, a loving. Uh, yes, I raised my voice, but not, not in anger. No, I love, it was very joyful. All of that. Ali's like, are you sure you're okay about the Schwartz and Raquel thing? And Jimmy's like, yes, I am. Why would you say that? I would be fine if they just started dating and they were open about it. And Ali goes, but then you do things like that. So do you see how it's confusing? Ali, my God, I love you so much. Please just talk with all of them. Explain all of their behaviors. New eyes are the best when they're smart. James in a talking head goes, it's not about me having feelings for Raquel still. It's more that I'm losing my friends. My friendship with Schwartz went out the window, by the way. And with that goes Sandoval. And that's all he can think about is fucking Schwartz because he had his fucking boy back. And I'm upset about it. So now there's this new interesting wrinkle thrown in there of Sandoval, like of DJ James Kennedy trying to be friends with Sandoval and Sandoval now that he's mad at Schwartz. Like it is interesting to think about DJ James Kennedy thinking about his placement within the group. Well, now, you know, he's getting rewarded because he's outside of that group because that group now is persona non grata because they are scumbags. So DJ James Kennedy, it's one of those kind of life gives you a gift of like, Oh, it's good. You're not in there and you're not forced into any kind of lying situation. So you still look okay. You actually look good by default. Allie goes, well, next beach day, I'm going to sit out. And James like, well, then I'm sitting out too. Yay. Evening brings us over to Tom Tom's for Christina's heart spring event. Christina's arranging her display table with all the products of spray mist bottles, bars of soap, slices of lemons and herbs sprinkled about. It's delightful. Lala and Logan arrive. Logan No, which by the way, I want to remind people, Logan No is Lala's really good friend, but Logan No is also used to be DJ James Kennedy's good friend. Remember, he was the guy that there was that rumor he was making out when they were really wasted. Was it Pride Day where it was like, oh, you know, they were touching each other's faces and there was always a little rumor and then there was a rumor that DJ James Kennedy hit Logan no and they had a falling out so I'm curious where DJ James Kennedy and Logan stand now especially as he's making amends but do you guys remember that this was actually a storyline in this season Logan no was there for the it's not about the pasta it's not about the pasta it's not about the fucking bloody pasta Logan was there on that scene so he's been around the block on terms of this show Christina's like, oh my God, it looks so good. Christina's like, oh my God, you got the chic memo because Lala is all dressed up. Uh, so they're talking about the lip balms, blah, blah, blah. This has been a long road for Christina. She would work at Sur at night and do this during the day. Katie and Terry Maloney arrived, James and Allie. And James like, gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, yes. 
Katie's like, I already feel like calm with this, you know, this, your, your sprays and all that stuff. And Lala goes, doesn't it smell good? Schwartz strolls in wearing a suit. You guys, this guy took a little whore's bath. Cause he looks great. He looks all gussied up. Lisa's shown up. It's like, so what's this Christina Kelly? And then Ken shovels in. Did you hear they were in a yurt in Kayama, California? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, did you hear Sandoval laughed very loudly on a picnic table? No. Lisa's like uh, looking at Christina's products. And Christina's like, oh, it's a face toner. Spray it out so you can smell it. So nice little product placement for Christina Kelly. Schwartz goes up to Lala, Katie, and Terry, who are sitting down. He's like, hey, guys, what do you want? And Terry's like, a martini. Um and Schwartz is like, you want a vodka soda, a tequila soda? Talking to Katie, he's trying to be really nice to her. And Katie's like, uh, sure. And Lala goes, I'll take a Diet Coke, Tommy. And Terry's like, and Tommy, Tito's martini. And Schwartz is like, straight. And Terry's like, you know how I like it. Katie will not look at Tom. And now this is, by the way, Terry, if you're listening, can you come on the show? I know some of these kids can't, uh, but I think you would provide great insight to all of this because, I mean, I was even trying to think about it an off a reality television show of, you know, having an ex myself, you know, what that would be like for my mom or dad, or even them being in those situations and what's going through the parents' mind in those moments, because they have not obviously been in those deep, dark moments, you know, that, that obviously Katie was in with Tom. So a lot of this stuff, she, you know, she's probably seen on the show, but she's probably found out so much information in this past year that she probably never even wanted to know. And, you know, Katie probably didn't want her to know, but also, you know, she has love for Tom. Like this was like her, her son in some ways. So it's that weird. It's gotta be so difficult for parents sometimes. Um, but it's also gotta be equally enraging when she sees Schwartz talk mad shit about her daughter. And you know, it's just gotta be wild. So anyway, Schwartz in a talking and goes, Katie's like giving me the coldest shoulder ever. In Schwartz world, we would have all sat down. They would have called me a dirty little slut. Like, what? And we would have had some laughs. Huh, I guess I'm going to stay in my little doghouse for now. Everybody feel bad for me. I'm going to put my fingers in my mouth right now. He, 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 he. I'm a dirty little slut. Lola goes, do you think you'll ever get to a place, Katie, where you can say, you know what? It's all good. And then keep him at a distance. And Katie goes, well, when he can apologize. Yeah, sure. And Lala goes, unless he apologizes, it's always going to be get the fuck away from me. And Katie's like, yeah, Schwartz delivers their drink. And he says to Katie, here you go. I got you a bogey bow, which is a drink. I believe that they have a Tom Tom. Terry's like, thank you. That was fast. By the way, Terry said that a little worried, like, oh my God, <laughs> is this properly made? Tom Ariana holding Tom's arm and Raquel arrive and Tom like, just in full douchebaggery he looks like like an extra in dancing with the stars of like why are we seeing this much nip from tom not even from a woman we're seeing it from tom you know i i really thought tom's look this season at the beginning of the season when i liked tom i was like you know what i could never pull it off but good for him it's kind of like a reality show david bowie which was way too nice of a compliment but i was like okay let let your free flag fly dude and now i just look at it i'm like this is cheesy as fuck like it is interesting the dynamics of when you know a little bit of what a person is up to behind the scenes how it really does affect everything that they do, how you view what they wear, how you view what they do. It really does affect things. And by the way, you should want to try to go through life doing decent things. But remember, you know, if you're an evil person, people will pick up on that in some forms and it will eventually color in how they feel about you in all aspects. And you will have to work your way up and back into people's good graces. Um, and that's all I got to say about that. Santa's like, what's up, guys? How we doing? How's it going? To Katie. And Katie's like, oh, look at that bag. Ariana has a beautiful purse with a circular handle of large, shiny crystal pearls. Pearls are having a moment. Did you see the Met Gala? Which, by the way, full video of my Met Gala um, recap on the uh, YouTube um, Lala on a tight head goes, this whole dynamic is so strange to me. Now we got Sandoval, Ariana, and Raquel showing up together. Maybe it's a thruple. And little Lala's like, yeah, maybe it's a thruple. And Lala's like, shut up, little Lala. No, you shut up, Lala. I'm going to go sit on somebody's face. And Lala's like, I just feel like I've taken a hit of acid, which it is. I mean, I, to Lala's credit, I completely agree with her. When you're just like, this is fucking weird. And especially because Lala's not on the inside of that friendship group at all. And Lala doesn't like Raquel. Lala doesn't like Sandoval. Lala, you know, 
I really liked Ariana seasons ago, you know, kind of gave her a little bit of a cold shoulder. And now I know they're good again. Lala and I talking to her goes, um, I'm sorry, Sandoval to Terry goes, what's up, Terry? It's good to see you. Raquel's like, hi, Terry. How are you? Hi, Katie. And Katie's like, hi. Like, why would you even like, just, just wave, just like, dude, like, you know, did the pageant circuit not teach you how to fucking pick up on people's like social cues? Like, no when to hold them, no when to fold them, girl. My God. Uh, Schwartz is like, do you want something to drink? What do you want? And Raquel's like, huh, Madam Butterfly. And Schwartz is like, whoa, I can't make that. And Raquel's like, oh, wait, you're making it? And Schwartz is like, I can make it. I just don't want to, which is the crux. Uh, like, that's, by the way, that should be sure the title of Schwartz's autobiography. I can make it. I just don't want to. <laughs> the Tom Schwartz story. <laughs> By the way, why don't we like? I listen. Everybody on Southern Charm writes about like. Why do we not have more Vanderpump Rules books? We just we got the Lala. We get the Stoss. You know, like Jacks had a children's book or said their. I don't know. Like where, where you know we should especially after this season. Come on, we had the the drink book. Uh, Raquel's like, no, don't make it. And Schwartz is like, how about a vodka soda? Splash of PT. And Raquel's like, okay. Schwartz, I mean, it is wild. You fucking work at a place called Tom, or like, suppose, like you pretend to work at a place called Tom Tom. You're opening Schwartz and Sandy's and you really, you find it hard to make the, it's, it's wild. Raquel, Raquel, by the way, it would be, I would be remiss to point out what Raquel's wearing right now. If I didn't, um, she's wearing like this jumpsuit outfit that has cutouts and zippers and straps and studs, but all you can really pay attention to, it looks like her big black thong is like pulled up to like the like middle of her back. I mean, just literally, I just can't even imagine what's going on down there. Like, is this even real? Like, I mean, she has to be cutting off the circulation to her private parts at some point. Like her vagina just falls out of her pants at one point, like just gasping for air. Um, it, it, I don't know what it's giving the illusion of. I mean, just uh, mental issues. I don't know. Lala goes, I used to look at Raquel as like such a sweet human being. And now I feel like she's stealing my soul when I'm in the same room with her. She's like a very stupid demon, which also is a great title for Raquel's book. Very stupid demon. The Rachel Levis story. Um, I like that line a lot. She's a very stupid demon. Because by the way, that's that's it exactly. We don't have to overthink it. What she's doing is evil, and she's also dumb. Period. Terry laughs at that. Terry knows a good joke when she hears it. And Sandoval's like, what's up, man? To Schwartz. And Schwartz is like, good to see you, dude. You're black, dude. And by the way, Matt, who is now the new bartender at Tom Tom, he was formerly the bartender at Schwartz and Sandy's, who Greg was like, fire him. He drinks too much. And Schwartz is like, no way. And then I guess they had, he got fired and he's like, we'll get you a job at Tom Tom now. And, uh, it's weird. Um, but he got fired. Um, anyways, he's behind the bar. Weird stuff. He was there on guys night. guys night. He was there as well. This guy, Matt, Lisa walks up. It's like, hello, Tom. Hello, Tom. And Schwartz and Sandy's like, Hey, what's up? What's going on, Lisa? How you doing? Lisa straightens up Schwartz's uh, shirt and Schwartz's like, what's wrong with me? And Lisa's like, nothing's wrong with you, dear boy. You're always perfect. Lisa, this is where you need to cut the shit. Stop lying to these people. You need to really, like, you, you like, every season, like, look at how we hurt each other, wink. Like, like, honestly, start pulling these people aside and like, hey, seriously, are you going to be a fuck up for the rest of your life? Remember, this show is probably going to last two to three more seasons and then it's done. Like, so, Buck, like, really start figuring out the after plan. Do you need help? Like, come on. Mm. I don't know how to respond to that. Oh, I don't know. My, oh my God, I just activated my uh, uh, Siri. Oh, do, oh no, I just did it again. Um, anywho. I'm back to this horrible show. Um, so Schwartz is like, uh, oh, sorry. Lisa looks at Sandoval, who has his shirt unbuttoned to his navel and is wearing his lightning bolt necklace. Now, remember, Tom has the big lightning bolt necklace and Rachel has a smaller lightning bolt necklace. And together, when those lightning bolt necklaces touch, you smell the worst bullshit of all times and Schwartz is like it's Christina Kelly's big night so I want to look good you know Ariana by the way at this point goes up to Katie's like can I pull you for a chat which is Love Island and Katie's like oh, okay I'll be back James and Allie are sniffing Christina's lip balms which is actually just funny now I'm just I am enjoying watching DJ James Kennedy so much because he's like it's like yes yes yep, I'm getting hints of lemon yes oh this smells like Imagine Music Festival yes 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 um 
Ariana and Katie go for, to a private spot in the back. And Ariana's like, I love your mom. But sometimes I'm just like, I don't even know what that means. Like, what did that mean in that moment? It was like, do you not want to talk in front of her mom? I'm hoping that's what that means. Ariana goes, so this whole thing with James and Allie and Katie rolls her eyes is like, oh, God. And Ariana goes, I just want to like nip it in the bud. And Katie goes, nothing was said to James. So when I was at La La's, Allie was like, so the other night at, after See You Next Tuesday, I was at the Abbey. Tom showed up, da, 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 da. <laughs> Um, and yeah, she's like, it's so weird. Just Tom and Raquel. And I was like, okay, you know, Sandoval goes out. Ariana's like a homebody. We were kind of like talking about like the dynamic of you and Tom and Ariana, um, goes, uh, what? Well, uh, sure. Okay. And Katie goes, and how I like, it's a little unconventional to some people. So maybe some people may not understand it. And Ariana goes, well, the way she repeated it is that you said we don't have any rules as long as nothing embarrasses me, embarrasses me. And I was like, that is, and Katie goes, okay, first I never mentioned rules and I never mentioned embarrassing. And Ariana goes, if you didn't say that, why would she twist what you said? And Katie goes, I have no idea. By the way, they show Allie and James sitting at a table eating those, uh, the, really those cauliflower, cauliflower wings that I love the, the. Oh, they're so good. Whatever, the cauliflower, one of the fucking cauliflower things at Tom Tom. I really like them. Ariana goes, with us like going into business together, Katie, I'm so excited about like what we're about to get into that like if disparaging stuff is being said about me, like I would hope that it wouldn't come from you. Obviously, like I love Raquel dearly. She's one of like my closest friends and I not only trust and love her, but I let her sleep with my boyfriend. <laughs> she goes, but I trust and love my boyfriend. And so I understand how you feel, but like I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, whoa, who is Rachel? Like, oh, I don't know her. Oh man, it's brutal. Cause once again, she's like, yeah, I know Rachel. Rachel's a good person. Rachel would not do that to me, nor with Tom. It's all good. And Katie goes, yeah, well, I mean, I hope she's a good friend to you. And Ariana goes, she is very much so. And Katie goes, I just feel like that this is a personality thing. This is a character thing. This is an integrity thing. And I have a hard time believing that she's like a shitty ass person to some people and like a good friend to others. Now, listen to that. I know a lot of people don't sometimes like to listen to Katie, but listen to that. That is it in a nutshell. It's a personality thing. This is a character thing. This is an integrity thing. I have a hard time believing that she's a shitty ass person to some people and like a good friend to others. She nailed it. And Ariana goes, if I was in your shoes, I would feel just like you. But like, if you know your beef with her turns into like me getting dragged into somehow like that, that's just not okay. So Ariana standing up for herself there. And Katie goes, I get it. You know, listen, I don't want you to take it. By the way, these, these are two women having a adult conversation. Um, I don't want you to take it as like a mean, like shit talking when she, I, I don't feel like it was shit talking. I certainly didn't mean it to come across as it was an open situation because I don't believe that. And I don't think that. And Ariana goes, bisexual monogamous relationships. And Katie goes, I was like, Ariana's told me she was like really insecure. So like, I don't think she could be in an open relationship. And Ariana goes, no. Well, I'm glad that we talked about it. Like, obviously things do get built up and I trust you. And I feel like us as friends and business partners, we're just going to go cl closer. And Katie goes, I'm really excited. Fucking really, really excited. Katie hugs her and Ariana goes, I'm glad we talked this through. And Katie goes, you've been through so much. Now it's so interesting these scenes, you know, where actual, you know, real adult conversations are happening, you know, sometimes weirdly, they're not as exciting as the bullshit, as these numb nuts, Schwartz and Sandoval and Raquel, because it's so interesting and somewhat entertaining to watch people be complete fucking lying idiots. And then these are like, okay, well, these are grown up people, you know, but when you really listen to it, they're really spitting truth i mean i think this is interesting i do also wonder if ariana when she watches these back if it just must like this some of this shit just haunts her you know i do wonder that um raquel is sitting at the bar by herself and james is like hello hello because like how are you good how are you good may i take a seat yes please join me nice bag and raquel's like thanks still love it it appears to be a Chanel with the classic diamond quilting. And James is like, I didn't get that for you. And Raquel's like, yeah, you did. Did I? Oh, he knows he did. He's just like, oh, oh, I didn't know that. Interesting. I get Chanel bags for everyone. So many bags that I don't even remember. Uh, you know, homeless man. He's a bag of Chanel. You know, the doorman bag of Chanel. So, of course, when I saw your bag, Chanel, I didn't immediately think I got that for you. Um 
So Raquel's like, it was a birthday present. And James like, what's up? Um, and he's like, I mean, I'm going to be completely honest. And James like, uh, uh oh, yes. James looks at himself in his phone to check his hair. Oh, on point, looks hot. Yes, yes. Raquel goes, at the beach the other day, I felt a little bit hurt by your comment saying that you regret, regret Richella and putting it on, which I understand, because obviously you wouldn't want a proposal that didn't turn out the way that you wanted it to be. But like, I feel like you shouldn't have any regrets in life. Oh, my God. This is like directly from Sandoval's mouth. You, Raquel, Rachel, you better fucking have a lot of regrets at this point. I'm usually there with kind of this kind of like pocket therapy bullshit. But like you better have a couple of regrets at this point. Also, once again, this is my Rachel bracelet, Rachella. Um, also, you know, Raquel, let's be a grown up and just say, don't. I, I hate that you regret our engagement. You don't have to keep calling it Richella. Like it's silly. And that's what I like about it. But that was a big moment in your life. Stop calling it a music festival. James like, so like before that, it was almost like, yeah, in life, um, I've lived with no regrets and stuff. But then you also need to grow up at some point and start realizing from past mistakes I think he meant start learning from past mistakes. Raquel rolls her eyes. And Raquel's like, sometimes I feel like you say things to me just to make me feel a certain way and to hurt me. And James like, no, you've always thought that Raquel, which by the way, I do want to point here. I definitely not team Raquel, but James does do that. And also that is what we call, you know, the word I hate gaslighting. Cause it's like, you know, like you always like, no, I don't. You've always thought that Raquel and you've always been wrong. And Raquel's like, no, but the way you talk to me, you've always Rachel, you've always thought that it's a little bit like you knew that would hurt me. Look, Raquel, it's obviously, it's not like I didn't love you. Okay. Of course I did. Guys night. But when, um, you look back on our relationship when you're 40, you're going to be like, you know what, James? I don't fucking regret our relationship. I don't regret saying yes to your proposal. Obviously, you have a lot of regrets in your life. No, I don't have a lot. You literally told me that you regretted Rachel. <laughs> regretted Rachel. You literally told me you regretted Rachel. <laughs> you dumped it. You're a dumb, dumb, dumb. The animal's like, I've never regretted. <laughs> Raquel, I've never regretted Rachella. Now, I, man, I think Rachella is actually a go for another season. Like, look out, Fire Festival. Rachella's on the scene. Like, you regretted the whole thing. James in a tiny head goes, oh, I may not have seen it in the beginning that I see now that she's just completely the wrong girl for me. And Raquel's like, so do you see how the hurtful that is to me? James shrugs. James in the talking head goes, of course I regret, regret Richella. It was an epic proposal and it was wasted on you. Raquel goes, I feel like I've grown a lot. You have. Yeah, Raquel, you've grown into a completely different woman. And I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's good. I don't know you anymore. <laughs> Sounds bad. Raquel goes, okay, fair enough. Look, Raquel, I'm proud of you. I am. I'm really happy on where you're at. Are you in playing the Imagine Music Festival with Cascade? No. Who does that? Me. So that's great. You've grown and you've done a lot of exploration. Some of that exploration has made you happy. Some of that exploration, like licking Sandoval's balls, hasn't made you happy. But that's okay. That's a part of life. A part of life. That's why I do everything I do in life. And that's why I don't regret anything. James is like, cool, peace. This is so funny. Like, what are you a part of like that? That's why I do every in the exploration. She's like on the Sandoval fucking NASA Express to Mars, like exploration. You're not a fucking astronaut. Well, uh, now in a scene with Ariana goes, Ariana, do you want to get a goodie bag with me? And Ariana's like, yeah, I'll get a goodie bag. And Lola's like, can I literally take one of everything? I love free shit. So um, Ariana's like, thanks for texting me, by the way. That was so sweet. And Lola, obviously about her grandma. And Lola goes, you've had a rough go, babe. And Ariana goes, Oh my God, this summer has really been trying to like do me in. I'm not going to lie. And Lala goes, I know this summer has kicked your ass. And little Lala's like, dude, I'm just glad you're here. Ariana goes, and how I have not faked my own death and disappeared. Like, honestly, I don't know how I keep going sometimes. This is fucking brutal. Lala goes, look, looks like you're trying to get a business off the ground. You're on top of dealing with grief. And Ariana's like, yeah. And Lala goes, I just wanted to make sure you're good because, and um, 
at that barbecue Labor Day. And Ariana's like, yeah, well, Tom came up to me and was like, Ariana's really mad at me right now. And Ariana goes, well, because he couldn't get a ride. And Lala goes, home to you? And Ariana's like, yeah, because Jason left his ride. Which, by the way, we're talking about Jason Bader, who's his drummer and employee. Jason Bader also, who is married to his wife, who works for Howie Mandel. And that's how that interview came. This Jason Bader, man, uh, he uh, he knew all about this. And I, I hope Jason's wife at some point, like, I'm sure Sandoval did this whole sob story on why he was doing this. But it, it wasn't right, Jason. I hope you understand this, too. And you are getting dragged into this as well. And I know you try to defend him at every chance, which is, I guess, OK. But, like, it is also right to tell your friends that they did do something wrong. And you were a part of some deception here. Um, Lala is looking at her trying to register the events and goes, do you think he should have just gone at that time? And Ariana goes, well, I don't think he knew he had left at that time. And Lala goes, no, he did know because I was sitting there. And Ariana goes, Tom, Tom. And Sandoval's like, yeah. And Ariana's like, come here. And he's like, okay. Ariana goes, I'm not going to do this where I like sit here and defend somebody. Ariana kind of just over it. I was like, I'm just going to have him here too. And you can talk. Ariana goes, hey, so Jason said he was leaving the party. And then you said, no, I'm actually going to stay. And Sandoval's like, what? No, 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 no. And Ariana goes, because I don't. And Sandoval goes, I said, no, like I'm dipping out. <laughs> dipping out and ariana goes because then you chose to stay longer and santa goes i i guess I, I don't know and ariana goes i found out my grandma died like while you were there you you knew about that and then jason said i'm gonna leave and then you said i'm gonna stay and she smiles directly at him and santa goes well and he like kind of bouncing from foot to foot trying to think quickly on his toes and then realizing he doesn't have the brain power for that and santa was like yeah um I kind of figured you wanted to be alone. And Ariana goes, then I was like, why can't you come home? And you couldn't get a ride. Ariana and I talking to him goes, when my dad passed away 10 years ago, we weren't even together then me and Tom. And he thought it like such a huge priority that he drop everything and be there for me. And Sandoval in this scene goes, I should have, I just, I figured, you know, uh, he's like thinking really hard. You can see the smoke coming out of his mustache. Ariana continues in a talking head. We've been together now for over eight and a half years. And somehow, some way, it feels like maybe he doesn't think I'm as important anymore. I don't know. Ariana says she wants to know why you didn't ride with Jason. And Sandoval won't look at anyone, let alone Lala, just at the ground. He's like, I don't, I don't know. I, I like, yeah, you ain't so cool now, are you, Sandoval? Lala goes, I don't need to know. I'm not in a relationship with him. And Sandoval like, no, no. And Lala goes, I with you. Ariana goes, I was fine with how things transpired that day. Like, I didn't, I wasn't, you know, I was, I was like, look, it happened. And Lala goes, it's okay to say I wanted you with me that day. It's okay to say that to him. Sandoval's light bulb goes off and he's like, I couldn't, I couldn't get a car. That's it. Oh uh, yeah. The, the, the thing with the wheels, uh, in the, you know, the four wheels, the, the car, yeah, the fucking car at that point. I could, I, you know what? I couldn't get a fucking car. Um, and Lala goes, I, I was standing right there though. And Sandoval's no, I, yes, I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you were standing, but there was so like, you also like the sun was like right in your eye. So you didn't see I was crying, I guess. Uh, uh, and Ariana goes, you said you didn't know Jason left cause you were taking a shit. Man, oh my God, I hate Coke shits, right? <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, no, it, 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 I love that Sandoval was like, um, I can't make it back to you because I'm, I'm taking a poo and I'm trying to find uh, some toilet paper for my bunghole. Sandoval takes a deep, defeating sigh. He's like, ah, oh. Ariana goes, you realize you put me in a position with this that people will think that I'm a fucking idiot. Everyone thinks that you wanted to hang out there for a few more hours. Now, Ariana here is very interesting because he's like, you put me in a position for people to think this about me because I think Ariana knows that Tom's that guy that just always wants to be out. So Ariana is accepted who Tom is, hasn't accepted the cheating, but uh, always accepts that this dude just wants to keep going, wants to be at the party, wants like, you know, but also what makes her mad is like now people just think I'm a fucking idiot because you're like this now at like the worst moments. Ariana gently wipes some shit away from under his bottom lip power move while speaking to him. Um, Lala goes, that's definitely what I think, because that's definitely what I saw. And little Lala's like, yeah, fuck you, Tom. Ariana and Italian goes, I chose Tom, I choose Tom over everyone. Like I ride or die for you. So I look like I'm an idiot being like Tom's number one stand when he's not mine. Boom. Sandoval, yeah, but by, by the way, that's what a relationship is. It's just two people or three if you're in a throuple being really big fans of each other. Not two people being fans of the one person, you know? 
Sandoval finally looks at her, you know, by the way, just like, you know, all the coolness is left shrugs his shoulders, but says nothing, you know, um, thank God nobody said uh, Raquel or Rachel, you know, like thank God Lala didn't bring that up, which by the way, I'd be so curious why Lala didn't say that in that scene. I would love to ask her that next time on Vanderpump rules, Ariana puts a sign on an easel that says something about her. Los Angeles 2022. So we have a sandwich tasting. Katie and Ariana are having the tasting. James and Allie are there, which by the way, when that Lala conversation, DJ James Kennedy, you can see him like just walking by like, oh, what's going on here? I'm eavesdropping a little. It was very cute. Uh, Lisa walks in with all smiles. There's something about her. Ariana goes, this is our Greek salad sandwich. It's one of our favorites. Um, the sandwiches are wrapped halfway with like this brown paper and tied with like a hemp string bow to pick up and eat easily without falling apart because by, that's me. I'm just, I fall, I spill everywhere. James takes a bite. He's like, wow, wowzers. This belongs at a Imagine Festival. Guys, no way. Sandoval's like, I want to go somewhere really cool with Ariana in the next scene. And um, I'm like, oh, wow. Remember all those times on the Howie Mandel podcast? You said how you didn't want to break up with, you wanted to break up with her and you were trying. But then here you're trying to take her somewhere cool. And George is like, are you guys okay? And Santa was like, I feel like sometimes like my very presence annoys her. It's almost like she can pick up on the cheating. Sandoval with his white finger nail polish, hands covering his face and fake crying. He's like, I just want us to be better, Ariana. You know, I want us to be more intimate. I want butt stuff. Ariana's like, I cannot have sex with somebody that feels like a stranger. Raquel goes, I and then in another scene, Raquel's like, I feel like in a relationship, you should want to like have sex. This is to Ariana. It's like, this is so fucking gross. Like Raquel and Tom better beg these producers to stop. Just like go, I relent. I relent to stop showing footage because this is fucking gross. Rachel, Raquel, Rachella, Ratchet. This is fucking gross. You're banging Sandoval and then chastising Ariana potentially in the scene about not having sex with him. Raquel's like, oh, I'm picking up where you left off. You're making my job harder. <laughs> Ariana goes, when you come home after working all night, you're like, what? You're just going to whip your dick out and I'm going to be like, yeah, let's fuck. That's never going to happen. Like, we have to spend time together. You know, this is, I'm so fucking pissed. Anybody that's like, Ariana deserved this. What I like, but that's it. So that's once again the question. Are women just supposed to be like semen receptacles for men? And if they're not ready when men are ready then like fuck them they're, they're they don't deserve to feel closeness they don't deserve to feel other aspects of a relationship they just need to drop trow and get to work like that's the shit that bums me out um sandoval uh by the way juliana leaves a note raquel is just planning putting away this information and her future plans for scandal. She'll have sex with him anytime and please him. Rachel's like, you filed for divorce. This is to Katie. You filed for divorce. If Schwartz and I made out or not, it's like none of your business. Lala makes that like, Oh, I'm going to fucking kill you face. And Katie's like, are you hearing this shit? And Lala's like, yeah. And they just start pummeling her. No, Raquel's like, maybe I feel more empathetic for Schwartz than you. And Katie's like, I'm so fucking done with you. I have a feeling this is where Terry Maloney, Katie's mom is right next to her at this point. I think And Lisa's like, what's that over there? And Katie's like, this is done. This is done. And we see back in the Sir alleyway. Finally, we come to where the greatest evil of the world was created in that Sir alley. We see, see all the, of these fire tanks which by the way why does lisa have that much propane behind in the sir alleyway it's like at some point she's really going to try to collect insurance money it's like somebody's gonna like oh, uh, nigga lane i need you to drop by sir alley and just throw your cigarette at those propane tanks um Katie's like this is done this is done she was like she wanted to apologize and Katie's like i don't give a fuck i don't need an apology from her it's all happening, folks. Boom, boom. Two more episodes to go before the reunion. We can make it, you guys. We got a month more of this. We can do this. We can go out with a bang. We can have fun. We can learn more about ourselves. And like I said, this is the finish of part one. I hope you'll join us for part two, where we'll go over all the big Vanderpump news stories for the week, because we do got a lot. I got a lot more work to do tonight, and you got a lot more listening to do. As always, I'm going to get sappy with you folks. Uh, I thank you for being here. I thank you. I hope you got some laughs out of today. I hope, by the way, I'm at my parents' house. So I don't have my normal lighting on me. So it does look like I've come off directly off the face of the sun. Um, somebody on YouTube, when I was at my parents' place last time I recorded from here, they were like, you need to get your skin checked out. It looks like you have a very dark, deep burn. <laughs> it's, it's like, no, just this. I don't have a professional light in here. Anywho. 
it's the weekend. So if I lose you right here and you don't come back for part two, I love you. Have the best weekend ever. Hang out with your friends and your family. Tell them that you love them. Eat good food. Work out a little bit if you want to, but just if you want to. Read a book even. Take up, turn off the TV. Watch a story made by writers. You know, Realize how talented writers are. Um, there's so much you can do with your weekend or you can just lay around and that's totally good too. Uh, remember, I'll talk to you bright and early on Monday where we'll have a pop culture roundup and and uh, Bill and Becky Bailey will be on next week, plus a lot of great special guests. Uh, I I love doing this so much, you guys. Thank you for allowing me to do this by showing up and listening to me as much as you do. And um, that's it. If there's anything, you know, here's my number, 310. Not, <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, anyways, I love you, and I'll talk to you on part two. Go, night. Yes.